Hey, I'm Marcus. And I'm Nick. We are Working Class Nerds. Cue the intro. gives you no information about your favorite information. Today is Thursday, April 7th, 2022, and you can find this 147 podcast on Apple Podcasts, Buzzsprout, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and anywhere you can find a podcast in the galaxy far, far away. You can also watch me terribly fail at video games, except when I'm being held handheld on Tuesdays, Saturdays, and Sundays at twitch.tv slash marcusb814 you can also watch me play video games every single monday night at twitch.tv slash nickvern51 and you can find the both of us on twitter i'm at marcusb814 and i am at nickvern that's n-i-c-k-v-e-r-n and this week's episode we're talking to the one and only tom tom tv that's right tom time tv is totally taking over i don't know why i added a time in there but it's tom tom tv He's a Destiny 2 help streamer and awesome mega nerd just like us. So thank you for coming on the show. And what have you been up to? Not much. How are you guys? We We are are fantastic. We're great. That was absolutely fucking amazing, by the way. What a solid intro. (laughs) I love it. I love it. We got to type, you know, hype up our guests a little bit. We can't just be like, oh. What's You're up? so good at like reading it. Like I, I've done so much like content, you know, TikTok content and stuff like that. YouTube, where like I try to like read something and I'm like I can't like for some hype reason, it up. I have to like yeah, like it's like straightforward. But we, <laughs> what we've been doing this for 147 um, yeah. episodes. That's that's it's, incredible too. By the way, that it's a lot of reps. Absolutely amazing. Yeah, it's a lot of practice. I want to, and it's absolutely incredible. So. You play a lot of games, sir. Too many. What have you been doing the past couple of weeks? Pretty much just, you know, obviously Witch Queen has just come out, Destiny, and uh, we've been just working really hard just to try to help pretty much as many people as we can get through this content, you know, mostly raids. You know, we just, we pretty much will start stream and just raid for eight hours straight, you know what I mean? It's awesome. It, it's just pretty much just trying to get as many people as I can through this content, you know, and so, so I was, um, I was just helped through a raid, which I'll talk about in a little while. And when you t- help somebody with a raid, do you have your set five guys like yourself and four of your homies that you're like, that are your r- diehards ride or die? Like, okay, Hey, Marcus or Nick, I'm going to, ki- I'm going to help you finish this raid. But, and you're like, Oh, do I need to bring friends? Nah, I have my crew. They are going to help carry you through this yeah yeah absolutely so usually what we do is i have myself and three others um now it's never really a set group of people that are with me it's just you know other individuals that are like myself that love to help the community uh and that that you know pretty much play as much as i do that are in a position to be able to do that um i do have one that you probably know nub that boy nub he is like my other half he is with me every pretty much every run, every step of the way, every stream. You know, a lot of the times we'll even take four people and just do like maybe some sort of a teaching sort of a run, not just like, you know, kill ads here. And, you know, we'll worry about the rest of the mechanics in the raid. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And we'll, you know. Yes. Uh, but it's all random. Like I have a, a Sherpa role uh, called the Champions of the Light or whatever in the Discord. And it's just people that want to help other people. So usually like before a stream, I'll go into the discord, into that, that Sherpa chat and I'll be like, Hey, just, I need, you know, a couple people that want to run that want to help. And then whoever, you know, first, whatever it is, they just hop in and then we go for it. You know, I will say that I would say a little difference between for me now, the SWOTOR community and the destiny community, you know, I don't really like, I feel like people help people but not like destiny like you guys just 
your entire four, six, eight hour stream is just helping people clear content over and over and over. And you guys like, I see people with like guardians helped at the top or whatever it is. And it's just Mm -hmm. amazing because like, it's gotta be frustrating sometimes because like, you don't know who you're taking. Somebody says, Oh sure. Oh, without doubt. Yeah. And like, it, 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 you could get a player like me who has played for, you know, six or eight months, but isn't, still terrible or you get Nick who Nick just started playing a month ago. You don't know the quality of player you're getting. Yeah. No, I think at least I'm okay at first person shooters. You get somebody that's just like never played a first person shooter before. Yes, I agree. But Nick, there's layers. The jump, the jumping in this game has to be the most ridiculous shit ever. Yeah. See, I'm a warlock main. And when I first started playing the game, My buddy was like, and all I would do was just jump in the air, float in the air. She's like, dude, you got to stop jumping in the air, bro. They're just pinging you out of the air. Like, just because I think it's Halo. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. That's what like my brain's reverting back to is like jump in Call of Duty, like jumping over a corner and stuff. Yeah. 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 (laughs) Hashtag Titan. Um, So I guess for me, it's it's more of like amazing because maybe maybe I'll get there someday but there's so much about the game that I don't even know about, you know, and I'm still learning how to like, how do you unlock the missions for the fucking evidence board? Oh, I'll figure it out. Right. Well, I couldn't even tell you that to be well, honest. Right. Oh, yes. But like, but that's, what's so <laughs> awesome about the game. And what I really like is I've been, so I've played SWOTOR for seven years straight, really mm-hmm. no other games, couple others. But now that like, whether Nick sticks to destiny or not, I feel like even if like once he gets to 1550 or whatever, he could stop playing. And when the next wave of story stuff comes out, comes back for a couple of weeks and we get to play together for again for a couple of weeks Mm -hmm. because we've gone years without really playing like legit. Like I think every year we probably played games together for like six hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and, and just play different games, you know? Right. Well, yeah, that's what I mean. But like in the past like month, Nick and I have played almost 12 hours together, just playing destiny between his stream and clan night or whatever. So, right. Um, I, I'm going to ask one question because I'm dying to know. Okay. What's your favorite raid in the game? Ooh, I got to tell you, it's the new one. Wow. It's the new one. Yeah, I haven't absolutely. done it yet. Now, like now I'm, I'm kind of like you is that I actually have only been playing destiny for about seven months, six months. Um, I pretty much refused to play destiny for a long time, for a long, long time. I wouldn't play destiny and not that I didn't want to play destiny. It was that I was more, uh, division style games. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I was a big division player, uh, one and two. And, uh, I liked the more realistic of it, you know? And, uh, I was, I did a lot of, see, I didn't like find the community until I started playing outriders. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you know what I, yeah. Outriders. Um, and I played. So much of that game. Yeah, I played so much of that game. We actually ended up becoming an ambassador for the game, which was really cool. But that kind of happened sort of like, you know, we're still wondering when content's going to come out for it. But that was the problem is that the game was pretty much like dying and we needed I needed to find something new to play. You know what I mean? And and that's that's, that's where Destiny came in. and, and, And that was it. Marcus knows the feeling all it. too well. So the whole point of that was I've only ever played the raids that are in the game right now. So I never got to experience any of those older, older raids, which I know a lot, a lot of people love. And, uh, but yeah, the new one for me is probably, probably my favorite. Wow. I, I no, um, it's hard for me to say because I'm terrible. Like I've been playing the game for, eight months, whatever. But like, I feel like the way I play and the way you play are very different. You know what I'm saying? I think I'm very casual because I, I couldn't even imagine helping somebody in a raid. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like that's not even in like my mindset. Yeah. See, like uh, that's what I've always like, uh, whether it was from when I was streaming call of duty zombies, cause I was a big zombie player. I would help people go through the, the, the Easter eggs and then it was Outriders. Uh, I would do Outriders help. That's what I did. I helped people go through the Outriders. And it, it just seems like that's just where, where you are. 
Yeah, I don't, like the feeling I get from when somebody obtains an item is ten times better than if I got that item. Sure. You know, I run a raid and I get the exotic. That means nothing to me. You know what yeah. I mean? I run that raid and they get the exotic. That feeling is undescribable for me. You know I what I mean? Or, yeah. Or, so it's it's way more fulfilling to have that other person get it. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. I um to answer your question, what my favorite raid is. So. I have to say um, Deep Stone Crypt because that was the first one I ever did. And then in Star Wars The Old Republic, we had raid teams, right? Where like we would run every Tuesday night from 9 to 11 and we would do hard content, whether it was hard mode or nightmare, whatever it was. And we would get progress as far as we can. It was progression rating, right? So I decided to make a team called the working class guardians and out of the people. Okay. Everybody here know that Nick is taking selfies of himself, sending (laughs) them to like 17 females while he's podcasting. (laughs) Like he's on the camera. I'm sorry. I had to call it out because he had the most (laughs) cheesy smile ever. Oh, that was that, that, thank you, Nick. That just made my day. But okay, I was, I was actually taking a video of like the Zencaster and like my coffee and stuff and the mixer, but uh, and then I ended it with your it cheese did. dick smile. Anyway, it did, it did end so, with a completely cheese dick smile. Anyway, um, meanwhile, back at the ranch, yeah. So, <laughs> what I was saying is, uh, so we put together a team, and there's some people that never rated like me in the game, so I would say it probably took us three weeks to clear. Uh, deep stone crypt three nights three mondays and when we achieved that victory like i didn't feel like i was carried i feel like we all did our job and we all had to do it because you got to get under the bubble to shoot the tannix and there's all these things that happen that you have to do and what makes that moment special you yeah know what exactly I mean? exactly um vault of glass is fun i mean all of it's fun but yeah i would have to say just because of like the sentimental value of deep stone crypt that's my favorite but garden of salvation is the most beautiful thing i've ever seen in my life yeah, it's my second favorite. any video game like i think the only game that i think is actually prettier than garden of salvation is uh uh what's the game you played nick uh with the girl with the bow um, oh yeah uh, um, zero so, dawn. yes zero oh, dawn. okay Like when Nick played that on the PC and she was running through those like tall pieces of grass. Yeah. And it like, it blew me away. Blew Uh, me away with the graphics. Garden of Salvation. I'm I'm looking it up now. I've not played the raid. Obviously it has a similar like vibe to a lot of Horizon Zero Dawn. Yes. Like the greenery with like the old arc, not old, but like formerly high tech stuff. That's like decrepit now. Technically find that on that raid on the moon. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Yeah, but you go through the portal. Yeah, yeah. You go through the. It's like so weird. That is that. That's my deep stone. Is my third. Uh, Gos is my second favorite. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Go, yeah. Guardian. Uh, what was it? We we're just saying. Gos. Garden of then, Salvation. Uh, yeah. Is definitely before the new one come out came out. That was my favorite raid. And then uh, then deep stone because deep stone's so much fun. Like if you ever listen to the music when you're in the space part, when you're doing the jumping puzzle across it's the most intense, awesome music <laughs> ever, like in the game. I'm listening to beats. <laughs> like I actually streaming. like when it back, back when I started streaming, I always listened to the in-game music in star Wars and I would be like, Oh my God. <laughs> Exactly. And then somebody's like, Marcus, you look tired. I'm like, I'm then, not tired. I'm just drifting. Music. How, yeah, how like many times class- can you hear? It's like, <laughs> yeah, like after like, three hours of streaming, you're like, all right. Yeah, yeah. I'm, over and, and I'm like, Williams. okay, I got to do something. Somebody's like, put on some music. And I put on this mix, some drum and bass mix. And I was like, whoa, reinvigorated, jacked up the volume of like all the chatting and like the cutscenes and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I was like, this is like a new game to me. Fuck the in-game music. I got the real music here. Do you remember when you could play um, music out of your Xbox 360? Yes. While you were playing games? Uh, I would do that all the time, too. Remember when you could play music on Twitch and not get boned and banned? Yeah. I mean, if you do it right, you can. 
You can do it still, right? Wait, I, mean, I, do, do, I do it. Yeah, but how do you not get banned? Because they don't have live uh, takedowns. So what they do is that when you're VOD, when you're done streaming, the VOD saves to Twitch and it goes on your page. If that, right. Then it's scanned. If that VOD um, has copyright music on it, you'll get a copyright strike. But they don't even really are giving strikes anymore. What they're doing is they're muting that part of the stream like YouTube does. Oh. You know, they'll just mute the section of the uh, stream that's copyrighted. Oh. You know? But I, they, they came out with something called the Twitch VOD track on OBS, which oh, okay. pretty much allowed you to decide what audio you wanted to go to Twitch, like to save on the VOD. So you, so I have, you know, go XLR. So I have like the music is a different audio source. So I just uncheck the music from the VOD track and now I can play music on my stream without it saving. So if you looked at one of my VOD tracks, you just see if there's no music at all playing. Huh? Whoa. See, I didn't, I didn't even know that was possible. Oh yeah. I don't think Streamlabs has that. We use Streamlabs OBS. Yeah. Yeah. I think they do. Hmm. That might be a game changer for me. The no, but thing. you should switch to OBS. Ah, I'm an avid OBS. I'm an avid I, OBS. I use, so, so I use OBS for YouTube. I can't mm-hmm. use. I can't because if I, I'm afraid, if I log out of one, and when I come back, it's going to be all fucked up. Oh, I'm, yeah. too, I'm too afraid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's definitely like because I, you know, the import when mm-hmm. you import it. Yeah. So if your your like resolutions and your stuff's not set alike then it's going to come out all like, and you're going to have to resize everything, yes, yeah, which no. I definitely had to do, but it was worth it in the long run. <laughs> um, yeah. But I don't know why the first song that I would play on my stream, if I didn't have a copyright would be big pimpin by Jay Z. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the first song. I just uh, thought to myself, I'd be like, what would be the I've first song? I've heard people copy- play that. In my yeah. Um, I should, I should just put on, you know, I, I should do a stream and just not have a VOD. Well, you so I that. just, yeah, I but mean, I yeah. did my birthday stream. I had to do it by accident because, uh, yeah, Nick, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Oh wait, my wait, God, wait. my birthday stream. I, okay, yes. okay. All right. Okay. But anyway, so that'll be my section. Yeah. It's, uh, that was embarrassing. It was fan fucking tastic. Who are you kidding? That was wicked funny. It was hilarious. But Nick, I feel like the VODs connect people to you when you're not streaming. So yeah. Like, you can't I not pers- have a VOD all the time. I feel like. right. Like I like the VODs because whether somebody watches it or they don't, if somebody goes to your channel and they're just like, well, let's check out his stream. Yeah. They, they can need, watch need two minutes or five minutes of it. Hearing me yell and scream and be a mm-hmm. fucking idiot. And they could be like, I like this idiot or this idiot's an idiot. I don't want to <laughs> watch this guy. You know what I mean? Click yeah. unfollow. You know what I mean? Right. Anyways, with that said, Nick. Oh, boy. What have you been up to this week? Well, okay. So I'll start with the less exciting stuff. So uh, Moon Knight Episode 2 was pretty solid. Uh, I like that whole concept as a show. I know neither of you have seen it, so I won't go into spoilers. But Moon Knight is awesome. Go check it out. Disney I'm going to watch it tonight. Um, I can't I also wait to watch ha- it. Marcus gave me some absolutely epic Star Wars art. Um, I don't know if I've posted photos in the Discord. I think I posted photos of the Discord in the Discord when I framed them, but I didn't post them yet that I hung yes. it up. Um, they're limited run custom art, like from Acme. Uh, you want me to just say it, Nick? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. So they're from Acme Archives. Acme Archives handles all of the Lucasfilm art. So, so you guys have context. The working class nerds old logo was hand yeah. drawn by an Acme Archives artist, which works for Lucasfilm. Right. And his name is uh, Cameron. Yeah, it's Cameron. And he drew our logo. But when we went to get our shirts original made, our yeah. original logo, when we got shirts made, it had an X Wing, it had a Death Star, it had TIE Fighters. We definitely got that, bro. You cannot print these. You yeah. can't print these. And we were like, what do you mean? It has a hammer on it and it has my name in it and it has a pair of glasses which has Nick's name in it. And they're like, if it was just like an X-Wing that was like customized, sure. But it also has the Death Star. It also has X-Wings. It has TIE Fighters. Yeah. It has TIE Fighters. Like, yeah. And, and, like, and the working class lot. nerds is in the Star Wars title font. It was like, yeah, okay. but, and they're like, well, you can't, we can't print this shirt. And that, hence why we have a new logo. Right. But um, so when I was there, I was getting the Christopher Clark, the Luke invader. Mm-hmm. And when I was there, he's like, Hey, 
um, are you interested in some movie poster prints? And I was like, like, movie posters he goes not the fucking movie theater posters like they're just like that uh, art style art st- well no it's a new hope uh, empire and return of the jedi but they're real prints they're numbered there's auth- they're authentic and i was like yeah shit send them because i have my um let me send you this uh tom um, so you can have contact so w- i got that piece and i got this other piece which is luke standing in front of um Marcus, make a uh, group chat in Discord so I can send him mine too. Uh, you suck, yep. Nick. Anyway, <laughs> I'll do that while we're talking. Okay. So what I was saying is, see, that just makes it complicated. Right. Of course. Now you're going to stumble over your words. Yep. And, and cause a whole it's disruption. Like, it's like we're a live fucking show, right? <laughs> now, where did it go? Right. We need a Jamie. I mean, I'm in your Discord. No, 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 no. We We just need a Jamie so we can pull that up. I can air. I can spend five minutes trying to airdrop it to him. (laughs) All right. So, all right. So that Luke. So the Luke picture. It's on Hoth. He's standing outside of the um, speeder that he crashed into the snow, and he's standing in front of it. But if you look at the ATAT, the ATAT is a um, sequel trilogy ATAT. Right. It's like a crossover. (laughs) Yeah. So it's the crossover because his force ghost was in front of the ATAT. So that's right. a real print. And when he sent me that, he's like, oh, yeah. And then he sent me the Christopher Clark. He's like, oh, yeah, there's some extra goodies in the tube. So I did my whole room and my office and I didn't have any more room. And I was like, fuck, what am I going to do with these prints? And Nick got his penthouse apartment. And I was like, oh, fuck. Yeah, like a hundred percent. I'm giving them to him, and I gave them to him, and he got them framed, and blah blah blah. Yeah, I hug him over my couch. Yeah, and I just threw the pictures in Yo, the those Discord. Are sick. They're yes. really cool. So yeah, those those are those are some. They kind of look like like uh, like horror movies. Yeah, like, yeah, like yeah, the 50s. yeah. That shit, it looks really sick because they're all like they're all painted, so it's all. Yeah. It's cool. I, so, I, I really like them. Um, the colors are so vibrant. Yeah, that's like, they pop a lot. It I looks have the good. saturation up on my PC, so it's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway, oh, so I hung that up. I played Destiny Two for my birthday stream on Monday, which was absolutely epic. <laughs> Out Shout- of control. Oh my god, it was complete and utter chaos, and I totally didn't do my homework. All right, so <laughs> so I I'll help. So I, it was Nick's birthday. I was like, dude, what are you doing on your birthday? He's like, just. I'm going to hang out and I'm going to do a birthday stream. I was like, well, fucking fantastic. I'll come over for it and I'll play on my laptop with you in person. Like, and we'll just hang out. And he's like, fucking great. So we're there. We're chilling in the stream. And then he gets a raid of like 80 fucking people from. I, what Ge- was his Geekerman. name? I had to look at it. That's what I was saying. I, I didn't get my home, do my homework. G E E K E R M O N Geekerman. Welcome to the nerds community. You are awesome. Yeah, it was like 70 p- people, 70 something people. I think it was like 80 people, Nick. Yeah, it was but anyway. So all of a sudden, Nick and I are playing. We're just hanging out, having fun. I think I, ha- I was like nine or 10 people or so. Like, you know, respectable amount, a little bit of hype in the chat, nothing too crazy. Like, I'm a happy camper birthday stream, right? Then, um, yeah. And then all of a sudden, it was like my like chat is exploding. Raids, hype, birth- happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday. Ding, 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 100 bits, 100 bits, 100 bits. <laughs> You get a follow. You get a follow. You get a follow. And then it was like, I didn't even, I missed the raid notification or it didn't pop up. It didn't pop it didn't up for pop some up. reason. It didn't pop up that, oh, so, you know, so and so is raiding you. So I was like, did I get raided? I got raided. Oh my God. It was cra- It was like a ton of people. You know how it, it lags for like your view counter? So I'm like, how many people just came in? Uh, and then like after five minutes or so, it gets reset to like, oh, I went from 10 viewers to 75. <laughs> I'm like, well, hello, Raiders. I'm plugging <laughs> podcasts, all that fun stuff. And then people are give, like donating subs and lots and lots of bits. And the whole that that Geekerman's whole chat was awesome. They're like super, super generous. I cannot think of enough. Shout out to everybody in the Geekerman uh, community there. That was fantastic. It's super duper. It definitely made my birthday stream to you guys to come raid. And the cool thing was like a lot of them hung out the rest of the time, too. It wasn't like there was like a one and done. Most of them stayed, which is cool. I think I stayed with like probably 40 or so people for a while, which was awesome. It but. was, and it was so great. And they were so excited. Like 
you guys both know, like if you see somebody streaming and it's their birthday stream, right. you're definitely oh, going yeah. in there and be like, happy the birthday, bro. Yeah. yeah, whether or not you raid their channel or anything, it's still the point of um, like of like making mm-hmm. them making their night. It was awesome. So <laughs> towards the end of the evening, I went to so like I play my music off of YouTube. I usually look up like a royalty free mix. So I'll have like my game on one window, my and then um, Streamlabs on my second window, and then I'll put like a street like in the background of the second window. I'll have a Chrome tab up with the music playing. But like my, I was streamed for a little bit longer because I had a bunch of people watching. It was my birthday. I'm like, whatever, I'll just keep going past past my normal time. So my music ran out that track my my mix ran out that I normally listen to. So I went to switch it to like restart it. And I clicked right next to Chrome on my browsing on my um what do you call it taskbar is Brave, which is an encrypted browser for things that you don't want to keep track of. <laughs> <laughs> so well, dark web, yeah, no, not dark web, but just like porn, basically. So, <laughs> but I don't usually use my computer for that, but I use my phone for it because you know I don't want to screw up my nice PC. incognito mode. Yeah, so it's it's like constantly in incognito mode. It's got a built-in VPN, and I use a VPN anyways. But um, so, anyways, apparently, I didn't realize this. Apparently, the desktop version of Brave compared to the it's almost like um, GoDuckGo. No, that's a search engine. What's the one that you use, Marcus? The encrypted browser. Um, I use uh, ExpressVPN. Okay. No, no, that's the VPN. I use that too. What's the other one? Not Brave. The Duck, actual Duck, browser Go. is it DuckDuckGo? Mm-hmm. Well, anywho, so. It's the same type of thing as DuckDuckGo. What I didn't realize is on your phone, it closes like a normal browser. You know what I mean? If you reopen it, it's a blank new tab play page. Well, apparently on the desktop, you can close out the window. And then when you reopen it, it goes back to whatever like the base website of whatever you're just on was. So <laughs> I act- it's right next to Chrome on my toolbar. So I went to click Chrome, clicked Brave instead, and it opens on my game window and it's porn. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best. <laughs> And that is why my VOD is not on Twitch anymore. Oh my god, that is <laughs> as great. soon as I was just done, I took it down. Oh it was like god. three seconds of panic. I'm being like, what the because <laughs> I'm like, I was expecting my music to pop up on the other screen. So I'm like looking that a quarter of my eye, I see a pop up. I'm like, wait, what? Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. <laughs> <laughs> just like... It wasn't too bad. It was just the it was like the homepage of spankbang.com. It was just a standard issue porn site. But I was like, of course, I went on this once. Of, you know what I mean? No, it's gonna haunt you forever, right? Ch- ch- right, exactly. <laughs> like, no, right. for sure. And yeah. thankfully, there was there was it wasn't like at the peak of the raid where it was like eighty people watching me. Oh it was my like gosh. dwindled down to like twenty five or something. So it was hey, whatever. Less less of an impact, but it was a very funny. The chat, everyone in the chat was laughing, which was good. Yeah. But um, it was a funny, embarrassing moment for you know three seconds of stream. <laughs> It was a it great was a, birthday stream. Well, I'm telling you, you should have yeah. clipped that. Hopefully, you clipped that. I got like, yeah, I took clip a video that, with my that phone. shit on TikTok or something. <laughs> Guarantee blowing up. <laughs> if I could do like zoom in on just my face for the when it's on the screen, yeah. I'm just like, ah. <laughs> See, I get so afraid I'm gonna get kicked off Twitch or for something like that. Like I go right. in instantly and delete the VOD. Like I don't That's even what I did. Clip yeah. Cause it I'm says, just like, all I need is it to be scanned real quick. And then I'm fucking dealing with that bullshit. Yeah, exactly. Well, when I, when I deleted it, it was zero viewers. So I was like, okay, I'm the only one that saw the VOD. Well, I took a video on my phone of the screen to show like one of my friends like, Oh, look what I did. <laughs> Actually I can post that. In the, so it happened too, but... once for me with the cop. Like, when I first got my two PCs, when I reset everything up, I forgot to go into my VOD track. Yeah. So for my t- eight to ten hour stream, the entire stream, I was playing copyrighted music. I mean, the chat, you, there's song requests. So oh, okay. they yeah, can yeah. play whatever the hell they want, you know, right. as long as it's on YouTube and not longer than ten minutes. You know? Right. And, and they try, you know, I, I tell them to try to keep it. They play some fucking crazy shit sometimes. <laughs> right. You, know, you never know who's going to just randomly come in and be like, song request. Boom, you know, right. and it's happening. Yeah, yeah. I've had to ban people. <laughs> you know, just trolls coming in. Of course, of course. But uh, I forgot, forgot to take it off my VOD track. And the next day, freaking email. I'm like, you got copyright strike, or or you something on your track was copyrighted. I'm like, what the hell? And I'm like, go yeah, in, and then like, there's these red, just red spots through the VOD track. I'm just like, audio is deleted out of it. I'm like, oh, they didn't well, even give me a strike though. Were, it was just, just like, oh, here, you know, we 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 just muted it. And uh, that's it. Well, that's nice. At least they're yeah. like, 
reasonable. Like, hey, people make mistakes. You know what I mean? I mean, if they came in live, I mean, I mean, they don't do live strikes, but like, I know a bunch of partner, a lot of partnered streamers that do the same thing. You know? Yeah, I feel like streaming. It's almost like if you're a DJ, right, <clears throat> at like a bar or a club or something, you can play live music like that but mm-hmm. you pay for the music if yeah. you're if you're a dj yeah, somehow you some way you right? paid for the music right you know what i mean too. so you've paid for the music in some way on a stream you're just playing the music in a ridiculous playlist and somebody yeah. owns that song That's and you're point. essentially there's potential for you to be earning money while doing it mm-hmm. That's a good point point. and when you look at it that way feel bad about it you know? yeah yeah because people are like yeah i, mean, I, I understand love that like i've playing music for my mind pretty much my entire life you know yeah, I've, been, yeah. I've been in bands recorded music and uh i do understand it but it's like i'm not it's not you know what i mean it's played low i don't know i don't know it's i get you this is a gray area you know? yeah it's because like Without you being there, right? Like people, it's the you and the music. It's yeah, I don't know if I'm that entertaining just to have no music. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> Man, they tell me to run. I run sometimes. You know, the... <laughs> I get it. <laughs> but anywho, so that's it for me. I had a great uh, birthday stream. Moon Knight was awesome. Cool artwork. Marcus, how's it going? And what have you been up to? Hoo hoo hoo! Uh, I've had a lot of fun. It's been really busy. Um. I feel thankful today. Um, you know, stopping streaming SWOTOR as much and going into Destiny, I feel humbled because people, ooh, excuse me, people, streamers, community members, all that have really showed some love to me. And Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. You know what I mean? Like when we stopped streaming SWOTOR so much, like it was rough and we've talked about it for a month. Right. And yeah, it hurt. And, and between the podcast and just going into people's streams. And I feel like when people, you go into people's streams, I'm always chatting. Like I'm a streamer and I podcast. I know that like a chat makes a stream great you know what i mean so if i can be in your stream for five or ten minutes chatting that whole time for those times can keep a a stream really going especially when the streamer is busy and when you as a streamer come back and see like holy shit the chat is going crazy let me read back and you're like holy shit this person marcus or nick is going bananas in the chat who is this fucking guy Hey, how's it going? And you welcome him in. And I feel like the people that are in some of those other streams that I watch are coming to say hello to me for whatever the reason, right? They've never seen my stream before that. Mm -hmm. And I'm super humbled by it because they don't, there's so many awesome people on Twitch. You don't need to come to my channel. You know what I mean? And so today I'm really, really thankful for that. Because I sh- the stream has grown. There's Destiny people that want to help me. They want to play. The clan night is going really, really well on Tuesdays. Like, there's so many positives right now. And I'm so thankful for everybody that just takes the time. Just to, if you pop in and say hi, that means so much to me. Especially, like, if you're new. Like, if you click that follow button, say hi. Because I want to be able to talk to you and say hello and thank you. And even if you don't follow me and you just say, who the fuck is this guy? I want to say hi to him. Like, you don't have to even hit the follow button. But if you do, you get the high five. Exactly. (laughs) Bam. Anyway. High five. Um, So streaming has been really fun. Like, I'm enjoying the hell out of it. I'm enjoying learning how to play destiny. A lot because there's so much about the game that I just don't even understand. I've been playing it eight months and I still don't know what these fucking red bars around guns do. Cause every time I try to, every time I try to craft a weapon, it tells me that I don't have the schematic to do it. And I'm just like, well, 
fuck off. I'm just yeah. going to start deleting these guns. I could care less now. You got to do you it know, five times. You have to fill one up, attune it five times before you can craft it. Oh. Wait, so. Wait, five di- you have to get the gun five different times. And do you that? have to yep. keep the gun five times, or does it remember that you did it? Just remember. So you do it. You level it all the way up to the hundred percent. You take, you know, you, and every time that you, yeah, you, know, you break it down. You keep the gun. You keep the gun and everything, uh, and you actually gain the materials you need in order to craft it later. Right. But you need to get. So I just finished five Palmera rocket launchers. Oh my god! So now I, I can so craft it. But then after you craft it, you got to level it up, which takes ten years. But that's but that's the true end game, right? That's the same way it is in Star Wars: The Old Republic or Call of Duty with these fucking the leveling up the guns, right? Yeah, that's the point of making. So when you see the, I'm gonna go to Golden Eye. When you see the golden gun, you're gonna know that this motherfucker grinded that gun out to earn the gold. Oh yeah, right. You know exactly. Um, so Good. wait, before you t- we move on, Tom. Tom, yes. you have a cat or a ghost. I have a door- dog. Okay, dog. I, I, have, I, have, a, I have a I have a I have a, I have a beagle, hundred purebred beagle that just never stops moving. Got it because of your door yeah, magically yeah, open behind you. It's like, no, you can keep it open or whatever. <laughs> you can keep well, it he, open. He won't I, stop, and then I'll I start saw, barking. It's like I saw it open behind oh, you, and awesome. nobody was there. I have. I was I like have two dogs. I get it. I have a golden retriever and a German shepherd. So, oh, golden retriever. My, yeah. That's that's. My girl's like, next dog is a golden retriever. She's like, I hope you know that. I'm like, I'm getting another beagle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what she said. Like, I would like. Eh. Um, uh, so my the golden retriever is he's cuddly. He just loafs around. He's dumb. He's awesome. Yeah. Especially compared to Maggie, because Maggie's sm- your gold. Uh, my German, but like German, German Shepherd, Shepherd is the dog. Yeah, that dog is the smartest fucking dog ever. She's really smart. Yeah, and like she's just. She's chill until you fuck with her, and then she is vicious. Not chill. <laughs> and but she's like the kindest soul in the world. Uh, she's the best. Yeah. Um. Anyway, what else was I saying? Oh, so like, so the YouTube channel is going great. Um, still working towards the goal of a thousand subscribers and four thousand watch hours. But like, uh, Greenbot videos has been making these shorts. It's going really good. Some of them, you know, it's really funny to see some of them get. A ton of views, some of them not, but I'm having a lot of fun with it, and it's just furthering the content, right? What I like is the it always comes stems around me dying, and it just seems to be funny. Oh yeah, you know it's what I mean. How it is, right? Um. So what we're we're doing now is we're going to do a clip contest every month now. So whoever co- creates the best clip will be thanked in that short at the end of the month. So we'll repost that short of as the clip of the month. And that person who created the clip will get shouted out on the podcast and on the YouTube short to say, thanks for clipping. Um, Just an extra way to try to get people to clip because when you're in the middle of a battle, you're not stopping to clip your own stuff. And then I go back to my, huh? I said, I don't even know how to. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> I know how to clip somebody else, but I'm not telling you, if it wasn't for the stream deck, dude, it would not be possible for me either. I just well, my stream deck button. stopped working. All of a sudden, oh, all my emotes and stuff don't work on my really? stream deck. I think I have to update it. Yeah, they're always making updates for the stream. Yeah, did you? So uh, how far the stream wouldn't be possible without this little freaking device? I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah. I hear you there. Um, so last week on sa- Saturday. Saturday or Sunday. I can't remember. I think it was Saturday. I did garden of salvation for the first time. So, uh, well, real quick divinity. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, so I went with free ride games. Yes. Free ride. Um, he came into my stream a couple of weeks ago and I talked about it and he just wrote legend in my chat. Right? <laughs> like that's it. He doesn't know me. And I freaked the fuck out because I was like, yo, bro, I'm not a legend. Just thank you for saying hello. I was super excited. Then he rated the channel, blah, blah, blah. So then I, out of respect, I was like, well, I want to see who this guy is. Well, I go into a stream and the guy's fucking awesome. Oh, he's, the, he's, he's, he's the man, dude. He's right. Seriously. He's one of, one of my one of my inspirations yeah, in, uh, in streaming for sure. Like, dude, he's awesome. So I started talking and I've been around the stream and like, we've been chatting and 
somebody said something about divinity and I'm like, what the fuck is divinity? And he's like, wait a minute. Best weapon in the game. And he's like, and he's like, what do you mean? You don't know what divinity is? I said, no. And he goes, oh my God, we're doing a run with Marcus. And I'm like, oh fuck, I got to find four (laughs) four people to go with me. And he was like, no, Marcus, you're coming with us. I got a squad that's ready to go. We're going to take you through. And of course, like I go in and you're, I was super nervous. Right. But like, I didn't fall from jumping. Like I made good jumps and there was a secret chest and there's my latest YouTube short. What? Uh, (laughs) I know exactly what you're about to say. Where you have to like jump out and then float a little and go into this little cubby. Mm -hmm. And he's like, Marcus, Follow my gamer tag and you'll be fine. And I did it first try. And that's my latest YouTube short. Yeah, I saw and that. I, yeah, <laughs> I would have died. I, I still didn't. die there every run. Every and I run. did it first try. And he's like, Mark, he's freaking out. And everybody in my stream was like, who is this guy? Is he like a professional commentator? He's explaining <laughs> this fucking raid perfectly. And I was like, dude, this is amazing. And like, they're running ahead. And I'm like looking around with my camera. Like, <laughs> this is the most beautiful place on earth. But then, as you guys know, there's always an initiation, right? No matter this, what this you is what do, I was waiting for. No matter what you do, there's, there's always something. Like in Star Wars, there's a pit in one of the raids, Dread Fortress, that if you're a new player and never been in there, we tell you to jump in it because there's a Datacron at the bottom, but you die. Right. So, so like that, there's this portal. And they tell me, they're like, Marcus, okay, you're going to go through this portal. You're the only one that can go through to start. You have to go to the far back right corner and you have to kill everything in there. It'll be very clear once you get in there. I'm like, all right, yeah, let's go. Well, I fucking go in and I just die because I fall in a pool of Vex milk. And they're all laughing hysterically. I was like, guys, I died. They're like, we know you died. I'm like, yeah, welcome to Destiny. Right. I was like, you fuckers. <laughs> and they're laughing. They're like, oh, don't get mad. I was like, I'm not mad. That's initiation. That's more than welcome. I, I think that's that. every run we do. It's like, have you ever been in this raid? Oh, no? that's well, yeah. come get your account, your free account chest right over here. It's only one one time per raid. It's right through this. World. Um, yeah, it's <laughs> it's almost like uh that what I was thinking of is it's almost like a rite of passage. Mm-hmm, absolutely. Yes. Like yeah. you have to do it. Like mm-hmm. like like falling in that the uh, Sotor raid to Soa. Oh yeah, the Soa fight. Yep, where you fell yeah. from the top all the way to the down, and you were a pancake. Yep, I, yep. I have people that we bring in, and they're like, "I'm like, have you ever been in this?" They're like, "No, but I know what you're gonna do." You think I haven't been watching? You think you think this is my first time watching you do this? It, but you have to go through it. Yeah, you still gotta like, go through. Yeah, you, like, dude, we're not finishing this run until you run through this. Yeah. So if you because like go into it and you jump, get to teach us, mm-hmm. you're going to do the same thing. I don't care if the people know if it's your first time, you have to go through that portal. Yeah. You can go in and like jump and then jump back through. That's usually what I'll do. I'll, I'll like, I'll like just follow me in here and then I'll just jump and then come back through. Uh, that is, I knew you ex- exactly where you were going with that. I was like, yes. But like the explanation of this dude and how precise the team was, and like how fluent it went was great. He's, I remember, uh, go he's got a lot of divinity, right? He's got over uh, probably over 5,000 guardians helped at this point, probably, which wow. is just, just absolutely just one of the, I can't, I couldn't even fathom that many people. It's great. Oh, it's almost 7,000 actually. Yeah. Absolutely insane. Well, cause he's doing those master Vox runs all the, like a hundred yeah. times a day. Mm-hmm. But anyway, Something else that was cool is like I had to do like a he explained it as dance dance revolution, right? There's six spots on the ground, and there's a line that comes off this boss. This, oh, the puzzle, gotcha. The puzzle. And he's like, Marcus, when the line goes to it, you're gonna run across. And they were so kind, right? Because at the end, they're like, Marcus, you did great, you did great. Like, I doing all these things for the first time. They're like, Marcus, you gotta understand, you did fantastic. I'm like, you guys say that to everybody because your job is to help people right so like no matter who it is you're gonna tell them you they did great I mean, usually he's not wrong though either because a lot of the people that we bring in do better than the people that are trying to help them like my sherpas we have like a command called derpa it's like why am i sherpas derpas like because they, they <laughs> like anything we're old they're always messing up more than the people that come in you know and that's the funny yeah. part about it you know what i mean 
yeah. which makes it great. Well, not uh, fucking me. I'm the worst. But anyway, it was um, <laughs> like, and and I just kept saying, like, guys, thank you so much. But they, you know, the oh, you know, it's it's not. Uh, how did they say? It? They're like, you did great. Don't think you didn't. I'm like, you guys say that to everybody. It's like, it's you know, when you're dating somebody. Oh, how was your dinner? Yeah, it was great. And you're like, all right, yeah, you say that to every guy, but I'm never going to talk to you again. You know what I mean? Got to be <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Like, thanks for spending $150 on dinner. Got to go, Nick. You yeah. know. Well, but anyway, um, thankfully, I haven't had that happen recently. But no. Um, <laughs> Ew. I'm just being douchey. Don't mind me. <laughs> yeah. Um. So it was super fun. I appreciated it. And then after I got the divinity. I continued to stream and actually a couple uh, other people, psychotics and uh brick brick play games. Yeah. She's great. Yeah. They came with me. So we did a, Oh shit. Uh, we did a nightfall on master or legend mm-hmm. legend so that I could use the divinity. Hell because, yeah. Like they're like, you can't get the divinity and not, not go use, use it. it. Yeah. And I was like, all right, sweet. This is great. So I used it. And then they're like, did anybody tell you the bad part about being the new guy with the divinity? I was like, no, <laughs> they're like, you're going to become the divinity bitch. And I was like, what is that? Bitch. Yep. And, and I was like, what's that? They're like in a raid boss. People are just going to scream at you to shoot the divinity at the boss and just hold it on the and boss. Don't and let go. Yeah. <laughs> don't let go. And you just hold that. And everybody's going to do damage. Because it like buffs the damage, Nick. 30%. Okay, got it. 30% more damage if I'm using Divinity. Great. Wow. Guess what? Master crit spot. Right. Well, if you can find it. <laughs> but what? anyway, um, back to Garden of Salvation. Um, it, it was so beautiful. And I was led through perfect, like perfectly. And they've made me understand it. Now that I've done it like that, now I want to go back. Because, like, I, you know, your first time in the raid is kind of like you're going through, but you have blinders on the sides like those mm-hmm. those horses. And because you're just like, I don't want to screw up. I don't want to screw up. But now I want to go because, like, there's a like where you had to, like, deposit the gambit emotes or moats. Yeah, the 30 moats. Yep. Like, somebody kept coming through the portal. So we could activate the cube again, but I don't know if they were killing things or if I was doing it by myself, but so I didn't- usually they, it's up to it's up to them. I mean, a lot of time when I do it, I try to just, just go back and forth and just tether, you know, and I, I usually leave the ads for you guys, for whoever, whoever's out there. Well, I think they did that. I'm not sure, but either mm-hmm. way, it was a lot of fun. I had a blast. The team was great. Like yeah, I just not a better crew to run with telling you just his voice like his team was awesome but like (laughs) his voice of like uh, announcing it like it made it super duper special Mm -hmm. because like he made it so comfortable for me it was it was cool um but uh clan night was great uh you know i like the tuesday night clan nights because it's reset day right yeah um and yeah, you're coming off a of spicy Nick Vern 51 stream, right? But like clan ready? night's great because you always have something to do because it's reset day <laughs> and you want to get your pinnacles. And I end up not getting everything. And we ended up playing mayhem for like two hours. Really? Like we filled yeah. six people and we just kept supering and laughing hysterically <laughs> because it was the most ridiculous thing. But I think the game knows chaos. that if like you stay in the game mode, they start pairing you against harder, better. Yeah, players. Oh yeah. Yeah. It'll keep yeah. saying breaking, breaking, breaking teams yeah. up for, for better. Yeah. That's when you know, my God, God, cause I usually go in and play one game of like any sort of PVP in destiny and I'll do really good. You know, I'll do really good. And then the next game it's like, Oh my God. Well, there it's goes that. Yeah. Yeah. teams up to find a better match yeah please don't yeah please don't give us the same team that we just won what skill based matchmaking please I right know. um everybody i have to talk about it we got an amazing update from uh star wars so star wars the old republic yep we want our pvp cues and matches to be healthy So we're going to be modifying unranked Warzone missions to allow players to progress 
even when the match is lost for their weekly. We took a look at the average completion of time of unranked uh, war zones compared to galactic starfighter matches and arrived at three losses equal one win for progression. So the following missions will allow on loss wins will count as three, uh, three points where you'll just get one on a loss. And okay. It shows the dailies and the weekly stuff. They had this in the game two years ago. They took it out and I was a hundred percent against it. I'm like, listen, anytime you require any game, not just this game to require wins to progress your weekly, it's going to create toxicity. Yeah. A hundred percent. Because if I'm playing with Nick and Nick needs one more win and I'm the reason why he loses, he's going to be like, Marcus, you fucking suck. Right. They're just asking for tension and yes. Toxicity. Yeah. 100%. So they, um, so they're changing that. And I think it's such a great, like it allows people, even if they're brand new to come to the game, to be able to not stress out about getting their rewards because they're loose. They're new. Right. Or they just got paired with bad teams for a night. You know what I right. mean? Yeah. I, I always believe that giving somebody a point for a loss is okay towards your weekly. Yeah. As long as your win gets more, you know, and it creates people to be happier. Like, yeah, we didn't win. I still got my point. All right, let's move on to the next one. Sure. Do you want to win? Of course we all want to win. Well, like a destiny pinnacle. Right. Imagine if a destiny, like uh, the destiny PVP matches were ba- ba- like, you can't get the pinnacle unless you get three wins. Yeah. I would probably wouldn't do it. Right. You'd be like, fuck this. Because right. unless you're going within a squad of three that you know that can play, that shit sucks. I guess that's why I don't play trials either. I've never played trials. Yeah, you won't find me in there either. <laughs> yeah, like I, I want to try it. I want to try everything in Destiny. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to mention that. And then uh, shout out to Kogus. He just wanted everybody to know that all of the uh, tech fragments, which is the currency to upgrade your gear, all of the amounts for PVP and rating are all going up. They're going to start giving you more because they realize that they're giving you too little. Um, I think these are great changes to the game period. Anytime you do something like that, this is a great change. I'm eager to see what else is coming later, later this spring or summer uh, for the game to start to further this 7.0 cycle. Um, but they said these changes will be coming out with our 7.0.2 update whenever that is, but they haven't given us a date. Any advice to uh, someone that would just be coming into the game? Um, log into the game. Wait, first go to AIE dash guild.org in the Hold top right hand corner of the screen, get the discord info and um, join the guild that's first and foremost. It's almost like it's, uh, it's like the clan. We have our destiny clan, which I run, but like there's, we're a giant gaming community, but like they do, there's a lot of uh, people in the discord that can help you learn with new player stuff. Yeah, definitely. But dude, if you like an MMO, the star Wars one is amazing. Yeah, mm-hmm. See, I was a big uh, DC universe online player for many years. And uh, that's, that and I pl- I tried to play I tried to play the Star Wars game like I said before it was the movement for me yeah, now I mouse. might re-download it and now uh, there's a WASD I might actually give it a shot oh yeah yeah you know? but uh, I do changer. like I, I like I love like I need another game besides Destiny you know what I mean like yeah yeah you gotta side, mix it up a little. you know what I mean because there's we're coming into even a point now where a lot of a lot of people are already burnt out on witch queen and, and destiny. Sure. You know what I mean? And, uh, I will, I guess I can ask this question now. How come people like, if you look at the ebbs and flows of destiny players, they come in at an expansion and the height is high. And then as soon as they finish it, they just stop playing the game. And then as soon as more content comes out, it goes up yeah. And where like SWOTOR, it like they give content, people come up, and then it's just kind of even, mm-hmm. and then drops a little. But it's never it's a slower like, drop off. Yeah, yeah, like the, it's like this is like the the steepest roller coaster ride for Destiny. Yeah, well, you even said it before with, with Nick is that he got to his fifteen fifty, and then you know, 
you're done. You know well, what I mean? No, no, that was hypothetical. Yeah, I mean, but that, that's that's, that's but, yeah. a lot of people that is real. You know right. what I mean? You get to the cap, a lot of people are going to be like, okay, I'm good to next season. You right. know what I mean? Right. Um, and that, that's, I mean, that's the mentality. I mean, I a lot of people even in my community uh, have gone on to start playing, you know, Tiny Tina's, Elden Ring, you know, like and all these other new, yeah. I'd rather have been a big Borderlands player or, or, or fan of Borderlands, like, because I was always more of the realistic style stuff. Mm-hmm. But uh, a lot of people that said they didn't like Borderlands are loving Tiny Tina's. So I'm like, maybe I'll give it a shot. I don't know. I but, feel like I would have liked Borderlands. I just, I never gave it a shot. Your same reason because of the cell shading. I was like, mm-hmm. man, Call of Duty. You know yeah, I mean? yeah, exactly. Borderlands is amazing. Yeah. I just, I, should, I just don't have time to play it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like I literally have two games that I'm a, I can play one full time game and like one back burner game, and like I already have them, and that's can't like there's going to be no other. Like I want to play Lego Star Wars, but the only likelihood that I actually get to play that game is if I play it with my kids. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. You know, you were saying it before though too, even like from switching games. Like I, I felt the same way when I when I when I moved from Outriders. My whole community was there. Switching over to Destiny was probably one of the hardest things ever that I ever had to do. And uh, so it's like now it's like, do I even like, do I st- even stream something else? You know what I mean? Because I've always yeah. been a variety style streamer. Like before there was Outriders, I was playing Apex, Warzone, any game, Star Wars. It didn't matter. I would have just full weeks where I just play Battlefront 2 the whole time. You know what I mean? Well, yeah. what I would say is you have to play the game that makes you happy. Yeah, absolutely. But there's a big caveat there. The caveat is if you rely on your community, you have to know that some of those people aren't going to come watch you play my little pony online or star Wars or PC universe. You know, good for Gronk and 87, AKA Jacob just, holding it down with my little pony online yeah he's the, <laughs> he's the only one that i know that plays that game but anyway I oh, God. um it's, i don't think the game exists that's why. It doesn't. Anyway, no it's just one of my um, paypal teammates that we i always say that um but the point of this is that they you have to play what you love like currently like i love destiny i'm not going anywhere there's so many things that i still need to learn how to do in the game mm-hmm. and do that like i feel like for me I can continue to do it. And honestly, if like all the big names or all the channels that are way bigger than me are like, I'm going to go play Elden Ring. Yeah. Well, good. Go. Cause then somebody's going to have an opportunity to hopefully meet me or you, uh, Tom or free ride or anybody else playing destiny mm-hmm. and go enjoy their content. Yeah. I was talking to one of my Sherpas yesterday and was literally saying the same thing. I'm like, you know, at this point, a lot of the bigger streamers are playing, you know, Elden Ring or whatever else they're off playing now that, you know, they pretty much are done with Destiny. I'm like, I mean, it, it whole, it's only going to hopefully better, you know. That's yeah. what happens, like, towards a lot of the end of the season last, in the last season is that, I mean, I never look at viewer count ever. Me you know, I don't ever, I don't like it. I, I you know what I mean? I don't want it because at one point when I was playing Astro I was stressed about numbers, you know? And I'm like, why am I stressed about a number when I spent the majority of my streaming career streaming to one person? Right. So I don't care. You right. know what I mean? I'm like, I, that's, that's silly to think about. You know what I mean? I, you know, I just, I don't look, I don't care. I'm the same way. If there's one person or there's 50 people. Right. You know what I mean? Well, the only time you'll care about your numbers are if it gets to a point where you get the, the email saying you've, you had 75 average viewers like you, and then you're like, Oh shit. Does right. that mean I'm getting close? Right. You know what I mean? And then mm-hmm. once you get that, that's when you have to watch the numbers and that's where the partner yeah. push comes. But right. like we, our friend Kymiri, um, he just made Twitch partner. Oh, that's awesome. And, yeah. And a year ago he, had, he was sitting at like 55 to 60, five viewers right. and we thought that was close but in reality it's that's not unless you're sitting in the 70s every mm-hmm. stream that's when you start to push yeah because if not like you don't realize like how that's many viewers actually thing. that is would you say mm-hmm. nick no I, 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 same point as you i was saying that's a big gap to go from right. 
55 to 75 average uh, viewers. Somebody explained it to me this way one time is that, do you know how hard it would be to get 20 people to come to your house and watch you play video games? Yeah. Like look over. That's exactly what's happening here. Yes. You right. know what I mean? <laughs> like to get 75, that that's, that's an you know, if you think it, that, huge. That's, it, it's, it's wild, you know, and you know, Twitch doesn't take raids and host into account when it comes to applying for partner. So, right. you know, I av- I'll average, you know, 50 people because I, I mean, I won't never look during stream, but I'll look at the, you know, my metrics and, and where I am yeah, for the month, you know, after whatever it is, you know, you always get those emails right after stream. Yeah, of course. You know, of your, your shit. stream summary is you know, Yeah, exactly. And like, you know, it's a, uh, it's always, you know, like I'll be around like 50, I'll be 60, you know what I mean? But then like, I'm just thinking like, like it's, it's, it's such a far even that 15 more people is just like, and where then, do they gotta maintain from? that shit? Yeah. For, right. <laughs> for, for a period. Yeah. yeah. And then like, most people get denied on their first try. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And that means you got to keep that steady. You know, I don't know if you know who psychotic wolf is, but he's uh one of the borderlands. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's a good friend of mine. And uh, he, when during our outrider days, he applied for partner four times. They fucking denied him four times. Wow. Yeah, it was. It's just like crazy, and then I and then Outriders sort of died off, you know, and the numbers went down, and then, you know, sheesh. But it's like Twitch. This it's you know the numbers are like crazy. The amount of people watching to the amount of streamers now it's it's crazy. And you know what's funny is two of our friends just made partner in two over two weeks, and they applied once and got it. Well, yeah, that's weird. I think I think Twitch looks at like the metrics of the channel. So if your channel has been steadily growing for For, a year mm -hmm. or whatever, and it's constantly like 30, 40, 50, 60, Mm -hmm. and then you're in that 60s and all of a sudden you're in the 80s, they're like, okay, this person has been steadily growing. He's not going anywhere where I'm not saying psychotic wolf or anybody, Mm -hmm. but like Dan Finity, he. Yeah, Dan. But like Dan, I watched his stream and he was always sitting in the 40s and then he got that big push from Bungie when they put him in the creator spotlight and all of a sudden his channel blew up, blew up yeah. and, but he got denied the first time, but now he's a partner. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like he applied yeah, a second so, time yeah. and he maintained the numbers and they were like, hell yeah. Welcome to the club. Yeah. But they like, they look pretty they closely the first at time it. Right. To be but, like, okay, Hey, this is because of this event. Right. And yeah, let's see if you can keep it kind of thing. Right. And it's pretty cool. That's so awesome. in AIE news, in AIE news, Final Fantasy XIV's division is starting up Sprout Raids tonight and Thursday nights at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. What's a Sprout Raid? I have no idea. I'm just reading the script. Marcus is going to ask, like, what's that? Uh, so a Sprout <laughs> is like what they call a blueberry in Destiny. Yes. Oh, okay. Or, or okay. a new light. So basically, yeah. once you hit end game or at a certain level to where you can start doing the raids, you're a sprout. And I guess there's like a little sprout above your head to let people know you're oh, they new. made that shit literal, huh? Bro, yeah, literal. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's Japanese from it's a JRPG yeah. MMO, right? I think I think JRPGs are the most literal games ever. <laughs> you know what oh, I wait, mean? Wait, wait, Sprout like like that. Remember that game for GameCube Pikmin? Yes. Is that what they look like with the sprout coming off here with the leaf? I, I think yeah, that's what leaf. I had it imaged in my head. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Me <laughs> I think too. that's the picture I got in my head. But I have no <laughs> idea, right? <laughs> yeah. So um, so they're starting and they're basically they're gonna be teaching you how to raid in the game. They're gonna be taking you through the old expansions, just showing you mechanics. It's basically like it's like a help stream. It's basically yeah. they're gonna be helping people to grow and learn how to raid in the game, which I think is awesome because guess what? The more raiders you teach, the more people are going to be available to raid, raid when you yeah. need help. You yeah. know what I mean? So it, it's great. Um, they also, too, in Final Fantasy 14, I'm not kidding when I say almost every night there's something going on during the week in that game, in our cl- in our guild. In um, AIE, yes. Yes. The, the amount of people, officers, and just players that are playing – week in and week out is amazing. It's probably the most active game in the guild because there's something to do every night of the week. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you're interested in learning how to raid, join Avivan and the crew Tuesdays and Thursdays at 10 PM. 
And if all this sounds fun to you, go to aie-guild.org. Get our Discord information in the top right-hand corner of the website. Click that button and ask for a guild invite. Whether or not you place Destiny or any of the other games we play, including but not limited to Final Fantasy XIV, Guild Wars 2, Star Wars The Old Republic, Pokemon, Call of Duty, Halo Infinite, uh, Lost Art, World of Warcraft, World Starcraft, of Warcraft, Justin, yeah, anything, any Art. game you play, I guarantee there's somebody in the guild that is playing that game at that at the same time, and they would love to play with you. And we even, even if it's My Little Pony Online. There might only be one person playing it, but he'd love to play with you. <laughs> Anyways, I definitely got a pee, so we'll be right back. Hello, nerds community. Guess who? I just wanted to say thank you, everybody, for listening to this awesome podcast. Who are we kidding? This terrible podcast for four years. While Nick doesn't know I'm doing this. I'm editing the podcast today, so if it comes out terrible, it's my fault. But it's only because Nick was supposed to do it, but he probably fell asleep on his couch watching TV or TikTok. But thanks, everybody. You guys are awesome. High five. Bam. And we're back. So today we're talking with the totally tantalizing Tom Tom TV. <laughs> We're coming at you with some <laughs> tough questions. Working class nerd style. <laughs> so Tom, all Tom of the alliteration all of the time. <laughs> I just made Marcus's eyes roll so hard. Oh my God. I was just <laughs> I like, thought, I was in the, not, I was in the flow and Nick was like, he gave me the hand. He, <laughs> he told me to talk <laughs> to his hand. I gave you the old Heisman stiff arm hand. Yeah. So, so Tom, um, why did you start streaming? So, like it seems like a lot of people, COVID hit, you know, and a lot of people were home. And I've always, I've always made content, whether it was just you know posting, you know, uh, tutorial videos on YouTube about zombies. I was a big, a lot of content I did for with zombies and stuff like that for a lot of years. Um, but it was just kind of just like I'm playing games. Why not just? do it like i i go to work a lot i work you know every day and i, I do the streaming as well and I, I don't really have friends i guess you would say you know and the people that i meet through here really have become more of my family and that's just pretty much about streaming was just trying to meet new people you know yeah. and you know play games and stuff like that um you know i always said i don't care if you follow me and or do anything just the fact that you're here was more than enough for me you know what i mean yeah. And like just that feeling it was just something I never wanted to stop, you know what I mean? And you Absolutely. know, COVID really made that possible. You know, unfortunately, some good things came out of COVID. <laughs> you know? Right. There's a lot a lot I met a lot of incredible people, you know. Both of you in that category. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know. So, you know, if it wasn't for that, I would have never, you know, met you guys and, you know, streaming has become such a big part of my life that it's it's hard to even think about where i would be without it yeah, absolutely you know I mean? well I feel it's, like that, go ahead nick oh i was just gonna say i feel like that's a big that was it for a lot of people you know they started streaming because they're you know hey i'm at home anyways i might i'm playing games anyways mm -hmm. i might as well turn the camera on turn the mic on and let's see if i can provide mm -hmm. some entertainment here yeah. it's fun for you it's fun for other people like it gives you that like charge of like you know, we were talking earlier about how you like you get so much more enjoyment about helping somebody get that that gun in a in a raid. It's the same thing. It's like if you somebody expresses that they're enjoying your stream or they're you mm -hmm. know they're watching, you get way more out of that than oh absolutely. You know, if if you're just playing the game yourself, it's like mm -hmm. oh I'm playing and also I'm making someone else's day a little bit better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's usually satisfying. Marcus, what I was gonna say is you know, and when you stream, when you first start out streaming. It's like, okay, yeah, this is a cool hobby. But then you start to meet people. Right. And there's that one person that always comes to your stream. Mm -hmm. And we all have that one person that just pops in our head. You yeah, know what yep. I mean? That is always there. Yeah. And it's like they become your friend, even though you've never met them. Mm -hmm. And that's why, personally, I love the podcast so much. It's like streaming 
I'm talking to you the same way where you're talking to me right now on the podcast, but we're looking at each other, hearing each other's voices. And that's what makes it special. Mm -hmm. It's almost yeah. like makes the connection real versus you talking to a chat all by yourself. Absolutely. Vice versa. Mm -hmm. But then the magic too is when you shut your stream off and the, the conversation continues in the discord, it's like these people are here to chill. Mm -hmm. It's fucking right. amazing. It, it, it's it's family. Really cool. It really is. It, you know, it's, these people are a lot closer to me than a lot of people in my life. You know, even some family members, you know, right. I got, we're, we're coming up to that year now where, you know, for me, like I said before, I, I streamed to, you know, one, two people, you know, to my girl who was sitting next to me for a long time, you, right. know, but, you know, and I remember, always remember the day, uh, just like I usually do. I just want to help people. And I was in and out, out outriders, Facebook, you know, page. And I just posted something in there. It was like, Hey, you know, if anybody needs help, you know, doing this, you know, I'll be here. If anybody needs some help, you know, come by. And and that one singular post on Facebook is what brought me to where I am today is that without like, you know, that, that was the first flux. I went from one and two and that first stream after that, it was at 15 and then it was 20. Wow. Then it was 25 and then it just got higher and higher. And then I started meeting like, you know what I mean? If it wasn't for that game in that community and that Facebook post, right. you know, I probably wouldn't be here today. You know what I mean? And I'm so fortunate and, you know, like, cause there's people that are, they're, they're getting their one year badge now, you know, in the, in the channel. And, uh, right. and, and it gives me goosebumps and a little, a little emotional because I never in my fucking life did I ever think I would ever be here or I'd ever get a message from somebody saying how I helped them through a difficult time in their life and, and something like that. Those, those things is what really makes like, I could cry right now thinking about it because of the people that, you know, that are super close that have been with me for an entire year that have said these things and, and really make it, you know, more real. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. It's awesome. I, it's, it's, Go it's ahead. a crazy feeling like to help somebody or like to know that like it's it's one thing to help somebody right that's an amazing feeling but it's another thing to like and or just be a positive influence on somebody mm -hmm. and it's another thing to like to know that you really help somebody out of a bad place yeah. right because we've all been in bad places yeah. right all, everybody has their points in their life they could think about that you know you weren't doing good whatever absolutely but like to know that you helped somebody out of their bad spot is like one of the best feelings mm -hmm. in the world. that's why absolutely. i like doing my job you know, mm -hmm. I like working in healthcare for that reason yes i you know uh helping people has always been the thing you know I, i'll lay it out there I, you know i don't really care I, I was an addict at one point in my life i've been clean for 13 years Congratulations. Um, at one point you know when i was in, in you know in a rehab i was front and center every day and then when i came out of there all i wanted to do was be a drug and alcohol counselor and help other people and that yeah. seems like what it always for me is just trying to help other people you know what i mean absolutely I'm like I'm, I always tell them my DMs, my messages are always open. If you ever need anything, you know, you can always feel free to message me. If it's just somebody to talk to, you know, I need that somebody to talk to too. So, you know, it could been always benefit the both of us, you know? Hell yeah. I, you know, and it says a lot about your character to do that because a lot of people, some people can say that, Oh yeah, just DM me. But they don't really want like it's, mm -hmm. you know, right. some people, it, it, but hearing it from you, it's real. You know what I mean? And I appreciate hearing that because we do the same thing. Like we love having people on this podcast to hopefully help them get their name out or, or just tell their story. Mm -hmm. right. You know what I mean? And it just connects more people. I use this example all the time. A tracks, um, great friend of the show, great mm -hmm. friend of ours. He was on the podcast for the first time and he was streaming in another uh, working uh, nerds community member was on Twitch. And he was like, oh, I'm going to look at who Twitch is recommending me today. And it was a tracks clicked on his name, got into a stream and said, hey, are you the a tracks from working class nerds? He's like, yeah, he's like, holy shit. <laughs> Next thing you know, he's hanging out in a stream every mm -hmm. week and they become Twitch friends. Yeah, right. And it's the mm -hmm. magic of helping people connect. And mm -hmm. it's the best. 
You know, it, it gives people a little more like, um, you know, it's a little different than going to talk to somebody face to face. You know, it, it's a lot easier yeah. for somebody to talk to you and actually lay it out for you when you're not, when, you know, if you just need to type it out, you know what I mean? You want to mm-hmm. vent, feel free. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Like, and that, that's, it's soothing for a lot of people, for myself. Like sometimes I'll just type out a whole freaking paragraph, but sometimes I won't even hit send. It to anything, just, you know what I mean? Just to get it out. Yeah, it's therapeutic just to get it out mm-hmm. and to express I, those those thoughts. I'm a talker, not a typer. Mm-hmm. That's Me too. Cool. I, uh, I don't know what I am. You're I'm a typer. A, I'm a well, definitely better typing than talking <laughs> for emotion stuff. Definitely. Yeah, I don't, ex- I don't express my emotions very well. I, I, I that, that I understand. Yeah. Not me. I am a talker. That, that, you want to know how I'm feeling? I'm gonna fucking tell you. Yeah, yeah. Marcus, yes, yeah, fuse it out. No problem. I'm like, that's a <laughs> that's a chronic issue for me. Yeah, his life is like not yeah not expressing my emotions. But <laughs> it works well when you're put in emergency situations when you have to take the scary things and just crumple them in a ball and tuck them in a the corner. But it's not healthy. Yeah, <laughs> stick it real deep down. You know? <laughs> right, real <laughs> deep. deep. Well, then I'll come back to that in, a, in about thirty minutes, and yeah. it'll be a piece of diamond. Yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> But anyways, back at the ranch. Uh, yeah, that's unhealthy. Don't don't emulate that. Express your emotions in healthy ways. Um, back at the ranch. So st- you're streaming. What made you pick Destiny? So like I was saying, it was it was literally. I, I always said I would never do, it, never go to Destiny. You know, like I said, it wasn't the because I wasn't going to enjoy the game. It was because I like more of a realistic feel of the game. Okay. You know, like the division. Um, but by that time, it was, it was the division is long gone, you know, and, and Destiny's been here for eight years, eight yeah. years of content. You know what I mean? I thought it was and seven. Seven? Could be no, seven. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure. I don't <laughs> know. Than five. I know that the game is in a place and like. It really was people being like, come on, I'll help you. Because little did I know that most of the Outriders community and the people that played Outriders came from Destiny. Right. You know what I mean? So when Outriders was dying, they, a lot of them went back to Destiny. You know what I mean? And a lot of them were like, oh, you got to try this. You got to try this. You know, and then, I, you know, and I've tried Destiny once before, um, about a year prior. Me but, too. And it was so overwhelming about all the shit in the game. I couldn't. And I stopped. I didn't get very far. I was like, all right, I, I can't. There's too much to learn out of an you know a game like this that's been around for so long. You know what I mean? But yeah. recently they changed it. Recently they made it a lot easier for new players coming in to understand and learn the game. I was right? gonna say when I I just started it with the Witch Queen expansion was my first time playing Destiny, mm-hmm. just like really giving it a shot, and um, I, I thought it was pretty solid to to like make it inviting for someone like me who's mm-hmm. I, i'm not really an mmo person typically anyways so it's like you know i understand some of the mechanics of an mmo from playing star wars old republic but i i had a great time like in terms of learning the mechanics of the game mm-hmm. and things like that how it was presented i thought yeah. they did a really good job yeah so i i love mechanics like that especially in like raids like rain mechanics to me are just the funnest thing in the world yeah you know, when it's not about the fight it's about doing things in the fight yeah. You know what I mean? Like those, like that's why like uh like like Deep Stone, Chaos Room, room three is is one of the funnest rooms in that game because there's there's no ball, you're not shooting a boss. Right. You got six people running around like maniacs trying to figure out what they're doing. You know, and right. it's it's great. It makes it's just great. You know, it is cool cool to find like okay, it, it, it scratches a lot of different itches for me, Destiny does, right? Like there's a in terms of mechanics, like you're saying, there's puzzles that like you would find in like a single player RPG, like a Zelda or something, or like I don't know, Breath of the Wild doesn't really have puzzles like that. I mean, um, Horizon doesn't have puzzles really like mm-hmm. that, but like I don't know, Uncharted or something, like something that's like much more like a single player game. Sure, you find it in an MMO. I didn't expect stuff like that. Like the rune puzzles in, in like mm-hmm. the Witch Queen. Yeah, there's story. a lot of puzzles in the Witch Queen. Yeah, which I thought was really cool. And then like even I haven't gotten into the raids, any any raids really yet in Destiny, but like even mechanics where you have to like get rid of the shields or like get rid of the um I don't know what the proper term for it, but like other enemies before that 
so that like the boss will become unshielded. Mm-hmm. I mean, just that mechanic oh, is yeah. d- different than I'm expecting. Like, yeah, same to. thing with the last boss of GOS, like you were doing for the Divinity. It's it's like yeah. you got to do all this stuff until you can do boss damage. You know what I mean? Right. And it really was Destiny being crossplay. Yeah, that was the f- was it because it was either really for me. I was like I I was always a Warframe player as well. I don't know if either of you ever played Warframe. I tried it once. You, you know, is that but- the um, tanks game or the? No, it's a third person like. shooter. Yeah. Um, kind of like Destiny. Yeah, but there's no actual concept. I don't know. It's hard to, to explain Warframe because okay. the leveling is the game. There is no actual end content, I guess. It. It's weird, but there's no cross play. You know what okay. I mean? For it. Not yet, anyway. And now that, that was the big part is that, you know, I'm on PC and a lot of the community is not on PC. You know, right. some are on consoles, which is which is absolutely fine. But I don't want to not be able to play with those people. You but know what that's I mean? what I love about having Discord. I just hope that Microsoft for Xbox and PlayStation integrate Discord into their system, because I feel like once that happens and you can have Discord on those systems, they don't even need a party chat system anymore. Yeah, but that that's why they won't. No, Sony partnered with them. It's coming to PlayStation. Yeah. I mean, you could get X, you can get Discord on Xbox. It's called, it's called Coral Insider, and it's an app you download on Xbox that gives you direct into your Xbox Discord. But you know, but it's a third party software. You right. Know, you right. know what I mean? So yeah, so they're listening. Yeah, they could be listening. You know, <laughs> they're listening. <laughs> Why are you blowing up their spot? <laughs> yeah. the app will get pulled off uh, right. by the time this airs. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, but I just want to say something about the division, um, because you played it. So the division was great. The problem that scares me about a division style game is the same team who made the division is making the next Star Wars open world game. Yeah, right I now. was going to ask you about that, and uh, how, how do you feel about that? Because I said mm-hmm. I would never play another Ubisoft game in my life after the division. What the division did, and so now I'm like, do I? Like, well, I, I'm I'm very two sided on this. I'm like two faced with the coin flip, right? Um, so we have one side of it is is it going to be an open world game like Odyssey and Assassin's Creed, where it's not a live service game? I don't think so. I think it's going to be a live service game because there is no other Star Wars live service game other than Star Wars: The Old Republic. Star Wars Old Republic is 10 years old. The graphics show all of that stuff. Yeah. They need a game to move forward. They can easily make a Star Wars open world game play like the division, just a division game, just Star Wars skinned. Right. Here's my concerns. If they do that, if it's going to be that, I don't believe there's going to be any lightsabers. I believe you're going to be a fucking bounty hunter. Bounty hunter, yeah. Yep, and you're going to be going through the game. Yeah. And, and that's something I don't want at all. Well, no, I'm nobody not interested does. in that. But the big but is, is if there's a new live service MMO style game for Star Wars, whether you're just a bounty hunter or not, people are going to yeah. play it. I mean, I even said that you know, the chat. I'm like, when, when, when it launches, you won't find me on Destiny. I will be playing that game. Yeah, like, of course. You know, it, it, you know, besides obviously Lego Star Wars, but like any other, you know, game that comes out, like I'll still, I still play Battlefront too, like all the time. Like, yeah, I'll just I go and play a little Supremacy. I fucking love it. You know, <laughs> I love Battlefront too. I love like, it. What I was gonna say is the thing that concerns me about the Ubisoft live service game is I feel as if they'll instead of taking the new model of destiny of look at this game looks great we can stretch this game for 10 years and just release new content for it over and over and over again they release a new game and that's what kills it like division one was amazing yeah it was the game was amazing the concept of the dark zone was one of the best things yes like- but then they instead of just riding with it they're like we're just going to come out with a new game yeah. and then we're going to kill the first game and it's like huh? man the first game was great well and- hey on the flip side of ubisoft doing that right i right. think it's rainbow six siege 
totally different game style, but live service. They keep putting out content. Yeah. That game is still going. See, that, that's what we need. Like, I don't want a game that keeps coming out. Like, like I want Destiny. Go free to play. And give me, I don't care, $60 expansions every whatever it may be. Well, that's you what know, they I did. Don't, I don't want to have to start over. Yeah, exactly. I don't want to have to start. I want a game I can just forever play. You know, exactly. and, and for it to be Star Wars, that would be, you know. Right. So nice here's my question, I guess, because you mentioned it. Would you rather pay $15 a month for Destiny and get all of the content always and you just pay $15 a month or $10 every season plus a $60 expansion every time it comes out? So that's where the DC universe comes in for me is that that's was what it was. It was $15 a month for all the content. Uh, and, and to be honest, I'm always a person that likes to pay a little bit over time. I don't know mm -hmm. why, you know what I mean? So I would like the, like uh, the $15 or $20 a month for a legendary membership where I get all the content, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Because I can save a dollar a day. And then well, for that month, you know, I have enough for the pass. Well, for me too, what would be awesome is if they did a subscription, they could give you the option for all of the old content. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? All the stuff that they sunset and look at, if you want a terabytes worth of destiny, you can have it. Yeah. 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 You know, you know what I mean? Like they don't have to vault content. Right. You know what I mean? Yes, I do. Yeah. So that's what I'm worried about for the Ubisoft game. The only thing I can think of that I wouldn't be is that their world building, like, like the, like it looks beautiful. Like the division one, the division two, the layouts of like New York city or Washington were the most beautiful on point, like street, everything was, you know what I mean? Like, so their yeah. actual ability to like create, you know, you, even the Assassin's Creed games yeah, and those stuff are like that. They look beautiful. Not that I'm not saying they know, you know, but the way it looks is, is, is amazing. I think they oh, I, would do a really good job with that. Agreed. Uh, whether it comes to the story of the game or whatnot, that's you know, for debate, probably a different, but, different story for another well, day. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, well, I'm the, the note of the graphics, right? If you look at graphics now, so when back when I first started playing on PC games, you, when you put your graphics at medium, it looked like you were playing on a PlayStation 2, right? It still right. does, it seems like. No. Yeah. Like, for me, like, I'll put it, in, maybe I'm just so used to looking at it so crisp, but even right. when I go to, like, medium, I'm like, this just looks blocky. Well, maybe it's because you're used to it on Ultra. Yeah, exactly. But, like, but, it, but the difference between Ultra and High or even Medium is not that much anymore. No. Like it is, and if your eye catches it, like I catch it because I'm a graphical whore. Yeah. It, like if I can't play a game on Ultra, I don't want to play it. That, that's the only reason why I have two PCs is that right. I wasn't able to stream at <laughs> Ultra High while streaming on the same PC. I'm like, I'm like, I want to like experience. You know what I mean? I want yeah. that. I want to play in 1440, and I want to still be able to stream. You know. I've always I'm, talked I'm, about building a streaming PC. But it always scares me because like <laughs> uh, now you got double the problems. Yeah, you're not wrong. Oh, I mean, I've been building PCs for a long, long time. Uh, I was in computer manufacturer repair for five years, six years. IT, you know, you know, it wasn't literally until I, until you know, the streaming that I literally saw. I now I'm a pizza chef. You know, I make pizza and I stream. You know, and that that's where like actually at this point I'm actually trying to get into maybe a home home IT sort of specialist that I could do from home. But like having that ninety five yeah. really would mess up, you know, the streaming and the streaming is in the is the end game, obviously, for me. For you know, right. for a lot of content creators. Like I would love to do this full time. You know, it right. I, you know, you know, not many people, you know, you don't make much, you know, unless you're you know what I mean? Unless you're the average one that's like, you know, could be like thirty thousand dollars, you know, a year. You know right. what I mean? Which right. is in today and with fucking gas, you know, what are you gonna do? <laughs> that's yeah. just gas money yeah. for the year. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> I stream to play for I, I stream yeah. to pay for gas. You know, well, you know. I um I understand. Streaming yeah. for me is about it's a hobby mm -hmm. and it's about helping people. Yeah. Like I never even thought that that like uh that that part and like like 
I sit here now, I can never even, when people are like, oh my God, you're so close to partner. I'm like, I, I, that doesn't even cross my mind. You know right. what I mean? I'm like, I, I, you know, it's like, if it happens, it happens, well, you know, but what, you know what I mean? It's not going to, it's not going to define who I am. Yeah. But I, here's the thing. Even if you make partner, you still have to keep pushing. Yeah. yeah there's no, it's not like you make partner and stop. Right. It actually gets harder probably when you hit partner yes. because now you you don't you know you want to keep those numbers up you want to keep growing you know what I mean like, well, and you don't ha- like what is it that thing that the ultimate goal and I I say this to new partners all the time because I'm not a fucking partner mm-hmm. I'm so far from it it's crazy but I say to myself all the time like how do you what's your next push like you have to keep pushing for something and what is it. You know what I mean? Like, do you say, oh, my goal is 200 viewers? No. Okay. Do a sub goal. Nah. Like, what is that next thing you do as a partner to grow? It's crazy. Yeah, It's really easy for you, Marcus. You're just, you're pushing for pink right now. Fuck off. <laughs> Tom, do you know, do you know what this is, Tom, Tom? I can only imagine what is it. Oh, so it, it's a little bit less uh, sexual than you'd imagine. So it's <laughs> it's uh, the push for pink happened when we had Chimera on the show and he was pushing for partner. So he we had him on like the week before he hit it. And I think he had applied but not heard back yet. Right. And through the course of our conversation, we were talking about dyeing our hair or something like crazy for for um, some like goal. When you achieve a goal, do something mm-hmm. crazy. We're like, oh, it came up that Marcus should dye his hair, his beard, pink, like hot pink, not just regular, like bleach it and then dye it hot pink for if he hits some goal. Oh, hell so, yeah. So we were like, ah, uh, 2,000 followers or something. It might not be 2,000 followers, but it's going to be something. So it's the hashtag push for pink. I fucking so hate every, you, Nick. Oh, my so, God. So have you, seen my, have you seen my color, colorful beards? I don't think so. Oh, you dyed yours? My man. The Marcus. I've had, I've a, had a, oh my God. Here. You okay. have a, uh, the a problem. But the the expert. thing is, is I have to go into homeowners' homes and do it. So if so I just dye shave my, it off after stream, but then I'm going to lose my beard. So what? Or you just dye it back? What am I going to use? Just for men? <laughs> That's for men pink. Bro, I'm telling you right now, though, it is probably the most grueling process ever. So my girl's a, you know, a hairdresser. I think I've had, yeah. I think, I think every one of my, I, I don't think I paid for a haircut in over 10 years. I think every woman I've ever been with has been a hairdresser. Kind of weird, but <laughs> you have a type. I get it. I don't understand what it is, but yeah, I do too. You know, um, usually, usually nurses, but it but. was the most grueling process. Like, uh, so I had a full on rainbow beard. Full on Damn. rainbow beard. Yeah, it's actually my Twitter profile picture. If you see my Twitter, it's literally, and I, I every month I would change it. So I'll, it first started off with a rainbow beard. Then I had it. Then the chat voted for a teal beard. I had teal. Oh my god. I had what was it blue or I think it was green. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, it uh, it's a lot of maintenance. <laughs> it's a, I can only imagine. I was, what uh is your Twitter handle public? Oh, yeah, it's at Tom underscore Tom Gaming. Got it. I'll pull it up right now. Yeah. So, it's- while I'm pulling it up, so do we have another question for. Yes. Um, What is your favorite game of all time? <sighs> oh, man. Favorite game of all time. Oh, I'll be at the. Like, yeah, it, it, uh, game that I would still play today that I still love more than any other game is probably Goldeneye. Wow. 64? Yeah. Wow. I spent a lot of my childhood on that game. Still to this day, I have the emulator on my computer, have it all mapped out. Like I still go in. That's probably one of my favorite games. The, the four-cornered GoldenEye games in the temple yeah. were, uh, were the best. Wow. That's, you know, it's so funny to hear that because it's never been said, but also too, you know, everybody has a different, opinion and i was so happy that nick was um distracted because usually immediately he's like oh you could give the mount rushmore but i don't like to give that option right away because i want to hear that original um, one that original one one, but then follow up with okay what are your top three top three i would probably have to say the original battlefront 
too is probably right up there. Oh, I still PS2? play it now. Yeah, for PS2 is probably. I played a lot. It, of it, yeah, that. that that yeah. Um, you played it, Nick? The original oh. Battlefield Two. Battlefront Two. Battlefront Two. Battlefront no, Two. Battlefield. Oh, Battlefront. Battlefront Two for PS2. Yes. Yes. Yeah, the original I one. Oh, uh, 2015 hours. Battlefront Two. No, no, older. The original Focus for PlayStation Two. Star Wars Battlefront Two for PlayStation Two way back. Oh, before they, re- yeah. before they rebooted the series. Yeah. Oh, 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 one of the one of the best, best in my mind games. Hundred wow. percent agree. Like, I never really. played it. Oh my god, you should you're, definitely you're go, out. go do a Battlefront Two stream. I'm telling you, you fucking a bonus it. stream, dude. Seriously, it's yeah. fun. I'll play with you. I'll download. I used to do uh, Throwback out. Thursdays before. You know, obviously, I had a community. I would do a Throwback Thursdays, and I was uh, I was playing all the uh, the old Star Wars games. Uh, would it actually play though, or do you have to jump through hoops to get it to play? Because I probably own it on Steam. I, I yeah. actually, I actually guarantee, fucking T, I do. Probably, if they made it for PC, I'm sure. No, no, I bought like a Star Wars mm-hmm. in one of those times of the. Uh, you know the good old Steam sales, the Steam probably, summer sale. Yeah, I probably bought mm-hmm. the, I probably bought it and didn't even know it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. they're selling the stream key for it for four dollars. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that was fun. Two bucks. I, I think I remember playing like hours and hours of like I have like two hundred of these game fucking mode. games, but like the different checkpoints and I just remember. Playing oh my Kashyyyk god, the they're time. so like that was like the first for me, like the first like holding a lightsaber and just ripping through people. You know? What oh I mean? yeah, like if you, that if was like a, if you were a Jedi or Force yeah. user in that game, you oh, were yeah. like invincible. Yeah, it was so good. Just like <laughs> it, felt, it felt like uh, Aragorn cutting down the the hordes of orcs mm-hmm. in lord of the rings oh 990 well worth it for a throwback thursday yeah but uh um, about eclipse what do you have you had the eclipse game you saw that trailer right yeah and it's not coming out till like 2042 yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah a long time it's like why are they i guess the word on the street is uh that they put out that trailer to recruit de- like game developers like employees. Uh oh. What? What'd you do? I did the thing. Nice. You, bought you, you bought it? <laughs> oh. Did you click buy instead of add to wish list? Oh my god. What He's looking at the second screen. Nope, I'm waiting for it to fucking come up. I, I started Destiny. <laughs> oh boy. You Dude. clicked the wrong button. I clicked the wrong button and tab. The show is ruined. <laughs> My rip that guy. Okay, Marcus, what's your favorite game of all time? Uh, there's two. I, I child. Oh, but you come at me for saying a Mount Rushmore, and you yeah, have but, two all the yeah, time. But, okay, so but it, it, okay, so if if you asked me for the first time what my favorite game is, Mass Effect Two. Okay, oh, you, okay, I did not see that one coming. That's but if you ask me, like all time favorite game, Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Because I worked my ass off to beat that game and you beat it and it goes, the castle flips upside down and you're like, what the fuck just happened? And next thing you know, you got to go through the whole thing. There's a whole nother campaign. (laughs) Well, right. There's a whole nother campaign and you go in and the first enemy you fight fucking hits you once and you're dead. You're like, well, whoa, whoa, the, um, the challenge of this game got really fucking hard, really quick. What just happened? Yep. They're like, yeah. gotcha. Yeah. That's why I don't play Dark Souls and shit like that. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, but it's, Castlevania is much more forgiving than that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Dark Souls. I can't even. Can't even. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not Nick, what's yours? Uh, see, I forget what I've said before every time, but like, I, I like a single player action RPG. Some of the games that I've spent the most time on are like Fallout 3, Fallout New Vegas. Probably if, if I had to pick one, it'd be Fallout New Vegas and Skyrim. For sure, I would. It's got to be like Skyrim. Well, games. Sky is if you if somebody said Marcus, what's Nick's favorite game of all time? I'd say Skyrim or Shadow yeah. of Mordor. 
Shadow of Mordor and Shadow of War. They're almost Ooh, Shadow of game. Mordor was a lot of fun. Dude, let me tell you, this is back games. when we first started the podcast. Oh Nick couldn't even talk to anybody on the phone because he was so addicted to everything. Like, dude, oh, I'm like, what game. are you doing right now? Dude, I just found a hidden side quest and I've been doing it for 45 minutes and I still haven't <laughs> beaten it. I can't talk right now. Click. <laughs> <laughs> and you can pause that game too. Oh, I love the Middle Earth games. I hope they come out with a third one. I will. I'll crush it. I love those. I definitely got to play them on. I, you know. You know what's weird? I loved, loved, loved those two games, right? But like, I never got into the Batman games, and it's the same mechanic. Yeah, of, yeah. I love the Batman. The, the like yeah, square, square, know. square triangle. Batman is mailing. not a real superhero. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's like, well, okay. Time. <sighs> I like the character Batman. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> I forgot Tom Tom's wearing a Batman hat and a and a flash t shirt right now. Yes. Mr. I'm, DC. Yeah. Long live Zack Snyder. No, I don't know. Kidding. Yeah, seriously. I, I, I'll hold on. We'll we'll get there. But uh I have a question for that coming up. But um what was I gonna say? The I don't know why, but I think like killing the orcs like is more satisfying than just like punching the the bad guys the bad Maybe guys i don't i uh, see like here's the thing i never thought i would like a game like that and then i played shadow of war or sorry shadow of mordor the first one um and loved it so like i never revisited the batman games and i feel like i really should to like give it a good try now that i know i really like that game style but anywho probably yeah those middle earth games the probably skyrim skyrim then, dude you spent like eight thousand hours in yeah, I, won't say I hate that game, but I hate that game. Oh, I played I like I, I, hours I I, walking up a cliff just to get yeeted off in another direction. <laughs> like I'm like, <laughs> see, I played it like from launch day, and there was like hype about about it. I played Oblivion before that too, okay. and and so like I was at the age where I think I was a sophomore in high school when it came out. So I was at the age where I was like just starting to like actually be able to beat like complicated video games. So I had uh, watched my cousin. Uh, play oblivion a few times and then like was just being able to play it myself and got through like most of it most of the main story and then sky so i was like i understood the concept of what skyrim was going to be and it came out and it was like you know a a way better version of of oblivion i just felt like i spent so much time walking around (laughs) i totally get it like yeah it was like these little glitches where you'd be walking up a mountain on your horse and all of a sudden you'd be flung a hundred feet off the yeah. mountain. And right. I'm like, I am not walking up this mountain again. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck this mountain. Yeah. I'm not doing this quest anymore. Yeah. That's how I feel about the Fallout series. I could well, it's the same it's the same engine. Yeah, you know I mean? know. I just couldn't get through the like the the VAT mechanic where you shoot them in the head and yeah. they still they're still coming at you after mm-hmm. you give them three bullets to the dome piece, and then yeah. they tell you your gun's broken. My gun isn't fucking broken. I just shot this dude three times. And he's still coming. He's still coming. But anyway. 76 at all? Uh, No. no. I did not. I did not add a principle because of the um, crappy stuff at launch. I played it when it first came out and it was terrible. Yeah. And then supposedly like a year later, they like redid the whole thing. The game is amazing now. If you want a Fallout, like you want a fall true Fallout MMO experience. It's the game to play right now. It's really good. Like, there's people that say it's amazing now. Yeah, it's, no. totally, it's completely different. But I don't you think, lost- like, like Nick, I probably, you lost me in the, the first time, yeah? No, there's that. And, like, I love Fallout because of the lore. Like, the environment's really cool. The whole concept's really cool. And then the gameplay's also pretty fun, but not, that's not like, I'm there for the lore. That's the mm-hmm. base of. Well, you know like, you're I mean? a single the- player RPG fan. Mm-hmm. You don't need. Tom Tom TV and Marcus B814 running alongside you in a game. <laughs> right. It's gonna take you out of the immersion. Yeah. Right. I'm 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 trying to get lost in the world. And like in that world, there's zero human or like alive NPCs or all robots. It's like that's not real. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't I didn't I don't know. I did not like that concept at all. But um have you ever been a console gamer or were you always a PC gamer? Oh shit, sorry, Ooh. Nick. No, that console was- gamer forever um i just maybe if it wasn't for my woman i probably would still be on a playstation um so Terrible. the whole reason why though is because um like I've, I've been always was a playstation xbox always console guy uh forever and uh what happened was is that somebody hacked my playstation account 
Oh, uh, okay. Somebody hacked my PlayStation account of years of thousands of dollars, hundreds of games, you know, yeah. the amount of money that was put in, you know, yeah. my DC account was on there. Everything yeah. I, everything I had was on, you know, the thousands of dollars. Uh, and after weeks of this motherfucker being able to contact PlayStation and get my account back every time from PlayStation support. So we were pretty much fighting over this account. I oh would get God. the account back. Then he would go. I don't even know who this person was. Yeah. All right. Uh, and then eventually PlayStation locked the account and yeah. then that was it. And then they were pretty much, you know, go make a new account. Um, you know, make a new account. I'm, I'm like, are you going to pay me back the hundreds and thousands of dollars that I is in this account? Right. Like I'm giving you legit receipts from the first games that were purchased on this count eight years ago, like whatever it was from PlayStation this, three, you know right, what I mean? Like clearly my account. Yeah, yeah. Like, like I, this is where I live. This is where the account was created in this town. Like, right. You guys yeah, can see all here. that. And uh, after just fighting and fighting with PlayStation, I eventually just said, that's it. That's it. And I bought a freaking pre-built computer and that was, that was it. You know? I get it. Yeah. That's what I did too to start. I got a pre-built. Yep. And then it's just it's just grown and grown like over time, you know. But Nick, after having a PC, yeah. Could you I'm... see yourself going back to full-time console? No. Exactly. No. I would love those no. console lobbies on Apex though, that's for sure. Yeah, right? <laughs> no, I um <laughs> So like I could see myself playing a, a game or here and there that's on console. Like I really want I really want to play Horizon Forbidden West on a PS5, but like I just don't want to spend PS5. But here's my question. But like I wouldn't I wouldn't go back to like just playing on a console as my primary. You know what I mean? My primary but, is going to be PC. I guess but my point is so Horizon Forbidden West has been out for what? 2 months now? Yeah. Right? You've got plenty of games. So if you don't end up getting a PlayStation 5, let's say in the next six months. Yeah. And they announce that they're going to release Forbidden West on the PC. Do you even need a PlayStation? Because it's going to come to PC, right? Yeah, at some point, you think. It'll be in a year. Sony Sony is see, realizing. I don't know. See, I'm telling like, you. It took, them, it took them almost three years to put God of War on there. But they're I mean? failing. And- they're going to lose to Game Pass. They're starting to lose, so they've created their bullshit um, X, their Game Pass. The PlayStation Play or whatever. Whatever, whatever it is. And you're going to be able to play the, but not at launch. See, this is yeah. where Sony is going to lose because they can't put up the money to make these first-party games without charging the 60 or $70 for them. But they're not going to be there on launch. But if you can pay 15 bucks a month, Nick, and get Forbidden West so three months after it's released on the PlayStation Game Pass, would you would you do that? Or would you just buy it in a year, two years when it's released? And then the other question is, is do you think Sony ever releases their games on Steam day one? Not day one. Not at least not for like five years. Not the ex- yeah, not for a not while. You would think, yeah, but, not the exclusives. See, I, I feel like Sony's. They losing. need to. I wish they. I wish they would. Well, they're not. People, they, they right are now, people dude. Buying. People are upset, man. You can't get a PlayStation Five. Xboxes are available now. Video cards are now available. Like, go to Amazon.com right now. You can get any thirty series card you want, except the thirty ninety Ti because I'm on the hunt for it, and you can't buy that card right now. You can go right I'll to take- Micro Center right now, and I got some stocked with them. The thirty the thirty nine. No, no, I'm just saying video cards in general. Right. Yeah. yeah like they're a lot more yeah. accessible now than it was say last year. Right. Or even like yeah. a month ago. Yeah, really. Like the Absolutely. demand for them isn't there anymore and they're just available. I mean, Doritos, shout out to Doritos, Nerds Community. Doritos. VIP. I did every show. Um <laughs> uh Nerds Community VIP. He he he's been he finally said to me, he's like, Marcus, I really need a video card. And I started searching and I saw Micro Center had 3070 TIs, 3080s all this stuff. And I was like, Oh, let me check Amazon. Amazon had them. And I was like, bro, buy this card right now. It's MSRP right now. Do not wait. Buy it right now. He got his 3070 TI for MSRP. He just put it in his computer yesterday. Like mm, that feeling. Yeah. That's nice. And I yeah. have the 3090 and I really want the 3090 TI. Yeah. 
So I'm, oh, I think I if I come across the TI, I, which I'm on a hunt for, I'll sell my 3090, which I'll still get close to what I paid for it. And, uh, and I'll buy the TI mm-hmm. because I can't not have the best. Did you have you heard the story about me getting my computer and Marcus upgrading his? No. Oh my god! So I bought a pre-built. I had a a dope ass pre-built, dope ass pre-built. So I've got like um, let's start with the boring stuff. Sixteen yeah. gigabytes of RAM, uh, tenth gen i seven, and a thirty eighty in it. So it's a shoo. Okay. It's a beefy. It's a beefy boy. Uh, then. So when I got it at the time, Marcus had a, you had a Titan, but it was an older Titan. It was a, uh, yeah, it was the Titan XP. So oh all I buy, so, so I'd love to just touch that thing. I well, remember, I remember you. Oh my God. A Titan was like, yeah. Oh, so Tom, that's yeah. all I've ever bought. Yeah, yeah. So my first graphics card was a GTX 760. Yeah. And then I went and then I had, uh, I bought two 1070s. I got a Titan. Then I upgraded the Titan XP, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I got a 1070 in the streaming computer. Yeah, so as long as, yeah. But anyway, so Nick had got this computer and I still had the Titan XP. And I was like, dude, we got to do benchmarks. I did. um, What was it? What's that software? A 3D mark. Yeah, 3D mark. Yeah, I use that all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So Nick destroyed me by like 10,000 points. (laughs) <laughs> I literally, when he did that and he, he told me what his score was, I literally hung up the discord call and just didn't yeah. knock. I was just like, yeah. I gotta go. like I Irish goodbye. Oh our God. conversation. Just click. Yeah. So then yeah, exactly and one then, week later. One yeah. Week, yeah. So then I had all my friends go on the hunt and a week later they found me my 3090. Yep. And I was awesome. like, so I had a nice computer a benchmark a now. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I was like, fuck. <laughs> oh, I had a nicer That's computer great. for about six and a half days. But you know what I'm going to say here is, and if you guys listening build your own computers, I I'm in a weird spot because my 3090, as dope as it is, is being gated by my CPU. Bottlenecking. Yep. Yeah. What kind of CPU you got? I have an i9 9900K. Okay. Yeah, I'm more AMD guy myself. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. If you want to stream and game at the same time, AMD is the way to go. My stream looks good. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I don't, I've always ever went with, I would never go with an AMD card, video card ever. You would never find a Radeon card anywhere near me. Mm-hmm. But yeah. uh, actually, it wasn't until recently did I go with an AMD processor. I always went with Intel, you know. But yeah, that's all I'll buy. Yeah. Like everybody can tell me how they're shit now and all that stuff. I don't care. Intel is like the old Honda uh, ATV motors, right? You mm-hmm. could pour out all the oil out of them and race that thing in in top <laughs> gear in a motocross track for yeah. three days straight, and the mm-hmm. motor still wouldn't blow. That's an Intel chip for me. You know what I mean? Right. And so anyway, so now I'm being gated or bottleneck, whatever you want to call it, by my video card, my CPU, because it's, you know, four generations old. Yeah. Even though it's an i9, it still can't. It, yeah, like, it can't. So, right. So I want to buy a new processor and motherboard, but they're so fucking expensive. Yeah. And especially Mother- if, you buy, if you buy a new board, you got to make sure you get a 500 series board. Especially if you got a 3090, you got to right. use those new upgraded PCI shit. They got going PCI well, 6 And the or problem whatever. is, too, is now with the new boards, it's all DDR5. Uh-huh. So oh, yeah, now you got to upgrade your RAM, too. Huh? What'd you say? Mm-hmm. Me or him? Uh, either one. Uh, <laughs> no, I got I got a 550 board, a new one, um, which I actually love because the 30 series cards can utilize that that new PC slot stuff. So right, and I mean, not uh, that I've seen a difference. But. Did you have to use the, get DDR5 um, RAM? No, actually, it's still you could still use older DD. You can still use DDR4 memory. Like, oh, but yeah, it's I thought- not. It, it's not. You have to use that, but it's capable of it. Marcus goes, oh, that yeah. changes the game. That changes. I mean, you can get a nice board for like a hundred bucks and a five hundred series board, for like a hundred bucks. Like, yeah, looking at you, thirty ninety. He's like, no. <laughs> he's like, I'm not buying a hundred dollar motherboard no, for no, my thirty ninety no. and yeah. i nine. Yeah, I'm gonna buy an i nine and buy a shitty board and then regret it instantly. Yeah, you have that Asrock uh, five sixty. Yeah, whatever. Power motherboard. Like, you know, I you know, uh, I don't have the best gigabyte 
motherboard in this one. The last one I had was the best I could buy. It was an MSI. Mm-hmm. And I didn't really see the difference. So like I had the highest end MSI, but the next one was like, this one's middle tier and it's fucking great. Yeah. The board itself won't make you have less, less FPS or, or something like that. Right. You know, well, it's just, it's more yeah, I mean, about if, the USB ports. Cause yeah, it's USB. Streaming. If you're overclocking, like you need to make sure that you got nice heat plating over your, your thermal capacitors and you know, and I do I do a lot of overclocking, uh, especially with my CPU and GPU. You know, right? I always love to tinker and see how much I can get before it just fucking crashes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> explosion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I only turn hey. up my CPU just a little because it's such an old processor. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And like, you make it so easy now, though. Well, I know, and oh, yeah. but like, here's the nice part: is when I do buy another motherboard. I already have a motherboard and processor for the streaming PC. That that is exactly how it happened with me. It's like, oh, I started building a new PC. I'm going to take these parts and put them in this one. And right. I already it. have the capture card. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, perfect. Yeah. Anyway, so speaking of things getting hot. Oh yeah. Very important question. Uh, what is your favorite ice cream flavor? Ooh, probably pistachio. Oh um, my god. god! I'm out. See ya. <laughs> this has been the greatest fucking podcast. Thank you so much, everybody. Um, you guys are fantastic community. I'm out. See you later, everybody. I almost what was the, I almost started on the spiel we gave to um Marcus B Gaming, I think before, or who was it that we, we gave the spiel? Like who the hell everybody likes pistachio ice cream. Everybody. <laughs> Stay alive. Stay alive. Stay alive likes pistachio also. <laughs> And he's on the um, show next week. Yo. Oh, great. Tell my said pistachio me. life. No, I'm <laughs> That's going to be the fucking topic tomorrow. Uh, next week. And he, it's going to yeah. validate his bullshit and your bullshit ice cream flavor. This is right. the biggest bullshit. Crock. I swear to God, we're being <laughs> trolled. I'm we, yeah. This you know, can't be I asked life. my girl that question the other day. I'm like, like, cause I saw the thing and I know it's how like, it's like, what's my favorite ice cream? And I was thinking, she's like, pistachio, obviously, you know, the green kind, not the white kind, the green kind. I'm like, oh you know, like, <laughs> like, this is her telling it to me. I'm like, okay. Right. I mean, I'll do all the pistachio, but if I was, you know, every day when I was a kid, I'd come home and have cookies and cream, ice cream. Oh, but as I got older, pistachio just, I don't know. So- so you developed into the psychopath that you are now. Yes. You weren't always that way. <laughs> yeah. You tried to give me pistachio when I was a kid, I would have threw it back in your face. Exactly. <laughs> that is, you know, That's the appropriate cookies response. and cream. You know? Um, Nick, uh, you should ask yeah. him the other we need fucking redemption. Like oh God, you better ask that next question, the big one. Because okay. like we need some fucking redemption here. <laughs> yeah. And I swear to God, if this is some ridiculous thing, I'm gonna oh just walk away and cry. All right. So the other important question that's a judge of character is who or whom, I don't know which is correct, is your favorite Star Wars character in all of the galaxy far, far away? Qui-Gon. Okay. Elaborate. Qui-Gon. Why? Uh, there's something about him. I don't know when I was a kid and that first movie came out because obviously I wasn't alive for the original trilogy. You know, I mean, not that I'm a fan of the prequel, uh, the sequel, I mean, the fuck prequels, uh, yeah. but um, that movie, the, some, there's something about Qui-Gon and then Master and Apprentice. I don't know if you've read that book yet. I did. I, yeah, it's, I, did I, I don't know. I, he's just so for me, he's just so mythical Like because you always see him. You don't really ever see him. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like the whole concept of the whole um, force ghost, you know, living on after you die, like that's all him. You know what I mean? Like, right. Well, you're going to see him very soon. Yes. Yes. Do you think we're going to see him? Or do you think we're yes. just going to hear him? No, no. Uh, you're going to see him. Uh, you're going to so. see. You think it's going to be Liam Neeson? Yes. He was yeah, casted yeah. for it. Like, of course. Like, dude, they, I'm telling you right now, Disney had zero budget for this six episodes. Yeah. If this is going to be like, pull your pants down, fan service to every single person. Uh, listen. <laughs> I believe. Wait, 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 wait. Why are we pulling our pants down? Because they're showing it all. Oh, oh, I got it. You know what I mean? It's going to be full flash mob. Like Darth Maul is going to be in this fucking thing. Yeah, that's another thing. How do you feel about that? 
I like it. Let's do it. I mean, but like, it kind of it's Ray. I, I, I saw their back. last fight already, though. Like, you know what I mean? I'm just, I don't know. Yeah, we like saw the real we saw Darth it, Maul it. is going to be back. Like to see those spikes. One part. Yeah, one that's going to be. Yeah, I mean, well, his his real his fight with um, Kenobi happens after the series takes place, right? Correct. It's in Rebels, which is yeah, it's in Rebels, and it's like towards the end of the, the end of the series. Yes. Yeah, this season and it wasn't take, even a fight. This take this see, <laughs> I, know. I think the like, series takes place two years or one year after Return of the Jedi. Yeah, I mean, um, is, yeah, Revenge of the Sith. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, okay. So well, like five years. Yeah, because the Inquisitors like are everywhere. So like right. Maul is there. Like I believe yeah, it was like that, ten ten years after I believe it was ten. Right. Years. I don't know. Oh, and the show is the Google Jamie. Jamie. Jamie, can you uh, look this up, please? Um, but what I'm saying is, is I don't believe that like if Hayden Christensen's there, they're bringing the inquisitors. I mean, everybody is going to be in this. I wouldn't be surprised mm-hmm. if you see like, or hear Yoda Qui-Gon's going to be there for sure. They are not going to miss an opportunity when fucking Obi-Wan yeah, is really starting can, to really. lose his mind in his hut because he's all alone in Qui-Gon. Yeah. Qui-Gon comes in. Oh, hello, oh I got it. <laughs> hello there I, I got it i got the answer so um the K- kenobi is set nine to bby like nine okay. years before the battle of yavin yeah and um rebels is between five bby and zero bby so it's before rebels perfect so we could easily see uh everybody all everybody we're seeing yeah. ezra too coming in ezra's gonna be making his way in for the soka show and shit right I say not probably not in Kenobi, but yeah, not Kenobi. Okay. No, but it's definitely like, they're if, throwing if, it all. It's right. If um, if she's ta- asking about where Admiral Thrawn is, then Ezra's definitely going to be in the. Yeah, they already well, casted I mean, him. It's the dude who played uh, it, what's that uh, Disney movie? The uh, the old oh, one. The, they cast him. It's a brand new world. Whatever that's. What is that movie? Oh, the guy who played Aladdin. Aladdin, yes. They, that's who cast him. Oh. So the other thing too is, I think that um, the, if this if. I'm going to like rage quit. If the first thing Obi-Wan says in the series has to be hello there. <laughs> General <laughs> Kenobi. <laughs> Just, they start the thing and he goes, hello there. <laughs> and he's talking to somebody in the fucking or, 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 or something like, like they exactly. casted Bail Organa for the show. So you're yeah. going to see baby Leia. Yeah, yeah, I heard you're going to see Baby Leia. You know what I right. mean? Like, all of these things are going to happen. It, this is going to be the ultimate fan service. I just want to know one thing. How much did they pay you and McGregor to play this role again? A. And oh, wow. B, how much did Hayden Christensen get paid to play this role? Oh, After yeah. all the backlash after the prequels, I can only imagine. Yeah billions yeah yeah a I mean, lot of money think about how how much like everyone like the prequels seem to now be coming out of this like hatred stage well like, it's like anything it seems else. now they're getting more appreciation and like yeah, and, like, like, yeah, yeah look at they're realizing the flaws it's like hey it's not this actor's fault it's the writing's fault or yeah. it's like if you, you watch I mean? the reviews from 1983 return of the jedi people hated it yeah, they were saying it was the worst one out of the three. Yeah. Well, obviously, you got, you know, Empire, which is the best sequel ever made in history. All right. And you every know. sequel tries to be it mm-hmm. still mm-hmm. to this day. Yep. Right. Yep. Um, What's your favorite stream moment? Ooh. So, like we were saying, I have a couple of them, and it, it really is when people come in and, uh, and pretty much just tell me how I, you know, I've helped them. Because I have moments where I've, I've literally cried. You know, I'm a, I'm a little girl. I, I seem to cry during my stream a number of times. I, it's like, stop crying. But uh, yeah, uh, that's pretty big one. Um, that those type of things when people come in and I have a lot of people that are close to, you know, they're like, you know, you helped me through this, you know, thank you so much for this, for this. Mm-hmm. But one of the funniest stream moments is when I just started playing destiny, uh, probably about like maybe like a, a couple of weeks in and I was going through my first fog. Uh, and I had a team helping me through my first VOG. And uh, out of nowhere, here comes Grenader Jake with 2,000 people in a raid. And 2,000? Uh, 2,000 people Holy he raided crap. me with. And uh, it, it was one of the 30 minutes of, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. You know what I mean? And yeah. uh, 
if you've ever played Vault of Glass, the raid Vault uh, Vog, uh, there's that one jumping puzzle in, in the middle of it that connects the second and yep. third boss. Yeah, I was there yeah. for about 30 minutes. I had all of them cheering me on, like, you can do it! You can do it! <laughs> like, I was, oh the my god. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. No, 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 that was a big, that was, that was one of those, like, so in shock like oh my yeah. god like, like why did you pick me yeah, what? on why this most you, exactly. awkward day possible yeah yeah right. yeah the one of the biggest destiny people just incredible dude like i just started playing he come oh my god i was just just deer in headlights like yeah i don't suck i promise and i, right, it's I just don't this. suck i'm dead <laughs> that happened I, I can relate a little on a much smaller scale obviously uh when I got raided on Monday, I was at like, my game wasn't working right. I forget where I was and I was supposed to click something and it just like, wasn't working. So I had to restart the mm-hmm. story, but I was like, uh, hi, I'm Nick. I'm most working class. Blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm like panicking, clicking all the buttons. <laughs> you know, that's, that, that's me always like, yeah. it, like whenever I get raided, I'm always like, Oh my God. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it just doesn't even matter. Like, I don't, it, I don't, it, it doesn't show like, Twitch has changed a lot of other stuff. Like you don't yeah. no longer know when you get hosted under a certain amount of people. It won't even like tell you. It's it's silly as hell. Yeah, it was really. Weird. I didn't know that you I know, got raided. I've noticed that like I haven't said to people in a long time. Thank you for the hostess. For the host. the hostess. Yeah, it's because they raised it. So you have to be host with over twenty something people for a notification to pop. It's like what? That's weird. Like, why? Like. Yeah. Um, what matter of how many people it is they're coming to you and bringing what they have you know what i mean right it's it's just shitty on their part but twitch has a lot of issues <laughs> i totally get it um all right i'll finish with a serious question so this next question is not serious so okay i understand you're really into uh superheroes and comic books as, as we are as well so why um, why do you, do you hold such a strong opinion that Marvel's superheroes and characters are so much better than DC's? <laughs> Can you explain that? Uh, well, it's not. Well, first off, obviously, I'm a massive DC guy. You know, and <laughs> yes, it's not that I have anything against Marvel. I love their characters. I watch their movies, but I, I've also have read a lot of their comic books, and a lot of the times, I read a lot of the '80s, you yeah. know, earlier comic books, and. Uh, for Marvel wise, there a lot of their storylines don't really do it for me. You know, at one yeah. point Marvel was about to go out of business. You know, right. if it wasn't for you know Iron Man and them, they were bankrupt. You know, it's yep. for me, and that's that's why like the movies are the movies for me. It's more of the comic book stories, and that's why you know people hate Batman versus Superman. They hate you know all this shit, but for me, I saw comic pages come to life. Right. Well, I don't care if you like it or not, but for me, that I mean, that was big. I don't care if it was just you know a picture sketched in a comic book that I just saw for a split second. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, but, yeah, but the DC in, movies suck. I'm not going to lie to you. For no, 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 no. So, yeah. like, the Dark Knight. I disagree. Amazing. Um. Yeah. This new the Batman. New... Yeah, amazing. Legit. Man, yeah, it's. I, I, it, I truly like the new one. Like a lot. the new like. The Riddler may be the most terrifying villain ever. Yeah. Like yeah. he's a co- and I've been saying it for a while. Like he's yes, it's not um it's a Jim different Curry. character than the Joker, <laughs> but the shit that the Riddler did was terrifying. Yeah. Well, that's yeah, also it's, it's also real. based on the long Halloween. You know, it's based on the comic book The Long Halloween. And technically that would have really been the calendar man uh right. who was in his position, you know, but Right. They, uh, I loved seeing the the more real Batman of him truly struggling and mm-hmm. and like he got his ass whooped a couple of times yeah. and oh yeah you know that's he, you know people are like oh he's getting his ass kicked this is him like year two right like, he's you're not, not seeing Ben Affleck Batman twenty years later that's just putting people's heads into a floor you know what right. I mean this is a lot different well you know, they played to his strengths yeah emo Batman. Yeah. <laughs> it was and you the know Twilight what? Batman. Yeah. Yeah. Some you know of that was, cool? I was like, ooh, like when I pan to him and the hair is like over the eye. I'm like, yeah. But uh, yeah. Right. <laughs> the Aquaman movie was good. Yeah. No, yeah, I love Jason solid. Momoa. I'm a huge Stargate guy. Yes. So to see him. Oh, my know, God. Stargate. Yeah. I'm, I'm a Stargate nut. SG1. Well. 
Yeah, SC one for life. <laughs> yeah, oh my God, I, too I, bad they too bad they shit on Stargate Universe. That that was just brutal ending. Yeah, the two season um, one at the end. It wasn't bad, but they just cut it. They actually ended it in a comic book, which was weird. But well, it's funding, right? It's sci fi only can go so far with funding, <laughs> and then if it, it like that's but, why they canceled it. It was too what much. Was her, what was the girl's name in SG one? Oh, who Amanda Tapping? Yeah, but what Samantha was her Carter? Name? Yes. Yes. Many, yes. Many Major Carter. Get, <laughs> many, many, many times did I get belly boners. Oh you're yeah. You're laying on your yeah, belly she, watching she her, is, and you pop yeah. a boner. Well, for ten down. seasons, I waited for him and fucking Jack to get together. That never fucking happened. <laughs> yeah, wasn't, <laughs> wasn't in the contract. But yeah. no. Um, it's it, oh man, that was I, such a good I, show. I, I like DC characters a lot. I like the dark grittiness. Like you yeah. can actually. I guess that's people. like I love Marvel movies. You well, know what I no, mean? But me I just too. don't read the books you know yeah. the actual source material really anymore right. you know what i mean i just yeah yeah and like i feel like dc went a different route like all their shows were cw shows and yeah, it's see, like that's I they were like they were just like teeny bop shows and it's yeah, like it, like it hurt. i so i watched yeah. supergirl Right, I watched it all too. Well, I, I watched, watched, a, lot. I watched actually actually a lot of the one of the better ones. Right, and my Super daughter Girl likes and, it. I, yeah. I watched a lot of the Flash. Yeah, right. I watched I all of it until, but after Crisis, after the whole Crisis on Infinite Earths and Arrow yeah. thing, I, that was the last I watched. That's when the whole thing should have ended. Like the Arrowverse, yeah. CW, that's where it should have ended. And they yeah. should have now went to HBO because I can't wait for this Green Lantern show on HBO. And, oh. and hopefully they do it yeah. right. And now they I have so. a. Now they have directors like Filoni and Favreau mm -hmm. who get it. And, yeah. you know, um, you remember, like, I remember when um, DC partnered with Mortal Kombat. Yeah. Right. And they did. Yeah. They made. Mm -hmm. um, what was it called? Oh, DC. Netherworld. Was, it was they DC made a, versus they, Mortal they, Kombat or something like that. Well, they, they've done. They've had DC characters in Mortal Kombat, yeah. but they also they made the Injustice games. Yes. They yeah, also but, did a lot of crossover comics, you know, between yeah, right. Justice League, Power Rangers, Ninja Turtles, you know, right. they're, you know, all of it. They but, even had yeah. one in the 80s Marvel versus DC. Yeah. Right. But I, no, Marcus, Nether, Nether Realm or whatever studios that makes Mortal Kombat, they made Injustice 1 and Injustice 2. I played the them. They were great. Yeah. Those are really good. Those, I, so I didn't, I wasn't familiar with those comic lines. I actually just watched this week, um, like these like five hour videos of like covering the injustice, like storyline. I don't know if it's like a recent version of it or if there's different versions of that injustice comics, but like, it's really cool to show like, like Superman, not it, evil being Superman. tied evil <laughs> Superman pretty much yeah. him, like, losing complete. No, not even bizarre, but like him, like losing his morality yeah. and like, through a very logical and like justified way of how that would happen. You know what I mean? And then mm -hmm. like logical responses of like these characters trying to figure that out. I was like, it was really interesting. Yeah. You can go on like YouTube and watch like all the cutscenes lined up. It's like three hours and like all the cutscenes, and it just shows you the whole story. It's pretty cool. Oh, this, this was, this was a person like narrating over the comic, yeah, uh, slide, that's sick. which I like, I thought that was cool. Cause like, I'm not, I like the content, but I'm not, I've never sat down, not never, but I infrequently sit down, like read a comic. Mm -hmm. So like to get it presented in like a video format was really cool. Yeah. But oh, yeah. the storyline's awesome. I, I yeah, it the makes, Injustice, it made me Injustice wanna, like, is really good. That's why they keep making these games. They're, yeah. they're, they're very popular. Well, That's I'll cool. be, I'll be curious to see how they go moving forward because the reality is for me now, TV shows are the way of the future, mm -hmm. right? streaming in general well no just the tv show because they can say so much more you know like no way home was great right but it's only two hours imagine if that was a six or six episode no way home yeah. how they could have gotten to crazy depth yeah mm -hmm. yeah and that's what, that's and honestly i, I kind of hope that they make a superman show that's like batman this Batman where it's dark and gritty and yeah. like the, not like, Oh, I'm just Mr. Perfect. You know what I mean? Like I love Henry. Cavill, and honestly, like, if I could see an evil Henry Cavill, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean we got a little bit. Oh yeah. A little bit of it, but in this, in the Snyder cut. Anyway. Uh, well, I want to see, like, I still have brand new, never been opened the death of Superman. Right. Oh Comic. my God. Dude, what a, what a fucking, I have one that's been opened that I read. And then the other one has been sealed since 1991 or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Right. And 
Why the fuck did they not make a doomsday movie where S- Superman dies? Make it a trilogy or a two, a part one and the part two. The problem is that they did, but it had they nothing did. to do with that story. Yeah, no, it, right. it shouldn't have happened. That, that whole thing was, it should have been, I don't know why they placed that in Batman. It, it, it made no sense. That is yeah. a, should have been of its own movie. But that's what and I'm a saying. Whole big movie. Yes, you know, Death of Superman part. isn't 20 Dad. minutes of in a different movie. Put Empire know? Strikes Back in Superman. Superman dies at the yeah. end. Yeah. To be continued. Then they didn't even give him the freaking black suit in the next movie either. Right. Like, uh, it was terrible. Well, that, not, that, 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 that hurt wrong. I just hope, I just like, but what Marvel has done is push DC to be better. You right. know, some of the updated uh, things, updated, you know, movies are great. This is why Marvel will always prevail, though. It's like, it's why I actually like Marvel has their their continuity and, and, and it's right. all linked. And right. that's what I love more than anything. I want like link continuity. You know what I mean? DC is yeah. these standalone movies, which are great, you know, but I want that Marvel line. You know what I mean? Like continuity. I want you know, these solo movies to lead up into a big movie and then characters crossing like Marvel's done it. They've, they've done, I don't even know. Like they, they've turned super like comic book movies and superhero movies are the movies these days. Right. You know, what other movies are making over billions of dollars? You know, you don't really see it. That's a non-comic book movie making that much money. But exactly. the, the thing about it is, is it's because Marvel has like DC, but like DC doesn't do it. Marvel has hundreds and hundreds of episodes of comics, issues of comics that they can refer to. They can take any one of these comics and just make a movie out of it. Mm-hmm. Like look at Moon Knight. Yeah. What are, like an obscure character getting his whole, sh- whole show. And did you it's know cool that Poe like- po Dameron said that the only reason why he's doing it is because he's not in the MCU. So he's not going to be stuck playing that character forever. I love how you call yeah. him Poe Dameron. Well, forever he's <laughs> fucking Poe. Uh, Oscar, 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 Oscar Isaac. Isaac's probably one of my Listen. favorite. Unfortunately, he. I mean, I loved him in the Star Wars, but like he uh, almost didn't. He's Sorry, yeah. He he he's a he, he's a La Folk kind of guy. I don't know if you know. He plays a lot of instruments. He was been in punk and ska bands when he was a kid and stuff. I kidding. actually follow a lot of his work. If you, you ever watch, you watch the new Dune yet? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's like fantastic. he's so good and like. But I, I love I love him. Yeah. Uh, every time I see him, I'm just like, "Where's your X-wing, bro?" Yeah, where's you? <laughs> like, I'm sorry. Like, there's people can play multiple characters, but once you play a Star Wars ca- character, I can't ever unsee that. Like, yeah. Ewan McGregor, I wa- I remember watching a movie that he was in, and I was like, I watched ten minutes of it because I'm like, Obi Wan. Yeah, you don't watch need me. the money, bro. Yeah. Watch him in Men at Stare at Goats, dude. You ever watch Men at Stare at Goats? Oh, you no. should. I, I saw the trailer for it. That's yeah. a, that looks like a weird movie. Yeah, it is. It's like him, like all of a sudden he's tripping on acid. With like, it's like, it's so weird. I can't do like, it though. I'll watch it. No, you know, I, it's literally about a guy who can stare at a goat and kill it. <laughs> right. <laughs> I understand. That, I just, uh, I forget who the guy who plays it. It's like a big actor. The guy who actually plays George Clooney. It. George Clooney. Yeah. Yeah. I see. Like talking about Oscar Isaac playing Moon Knight. I, I think I heard he only took the role because he was he was saying he was really frustrated with how Poe Dameron came out because he ended up being like this one dimensional character. And he's like, no, I want to play something more dynamic. And he originally said no to Moon Knight a bunch. And then was like, oh, OK, he's not in the MCU, so he's not going to get pulled into other stuff. A B he well, it's like, wait a minute. He better get pulled into other shit. I, I mean, he's perfect Marcus, for Blade and fucking. Right. Wait a minute. I didn't. He- I don't think I heard that. I'm just remembering you. S- remembering you say that, Marcus. Where did you hear that? Moon Knight's I, not in the MCU. I actually no, heard no. him say that too. Yeah. It, he's just. They said that he's not. When he was going for the role, he's like he's not going to be in the MCU universe. Like, yeah. Multiple movies are not going to drag him into the Avengers. All that stuff. Oh, he's okay. in the MCU, but it's not the cinematic universe. I should yeah. say. Yeah, I saw okay. like comic book news net or something yeah. about it. I read that on. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, because like, yeah, because he doesn't want to be tied to a role forever. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? Because like, like I, I thought I always saw Moon Knight coming in as like with Blade and like yeah, I yeah, forgot Blade. the character. Like it's I, mean, I think it's it's not the Black Knight, but the guy who whoever wields the ebony blade, that character that's like um Yeah, the Black Knight. Yeah, is it yeah. Black Knight? Yeah, I Black Knight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. John yeah, Snow. Like, 
Right, John. <laughs> exactly. I was going to say, fuck, what's John Snow's real name? <laughs> I can't Harry remember. Finn. What is John Snow? <laughs> Speaking of seeing people as one character, but. Um, Poe Dameron. <laughs> yeah. Right. Po da- yeah. Oscar Isaac being Poe Dameron. He was like, hey, this Moon Knight character's got, you know, DID that's like very dynamic. That you're mm. playing two people, three people, four people at the same time. Um, you know, that's that it's going to be way more dynamic and like let yeah. you be more interesting than Poe Dameron. So he's like, okay, like I'll do it. But. It's interesting. Mm-hmm. So, hey, uh, what are your stream goals? So before we wrap things up, I really like 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 he was saying, like it's it's more of a hobby than anything. I don't really have more like like straight goals. Like I want to hit a thousand followers or 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 this or that because numbers. It's it's for me. It's just meet more people, and you know, just just you know, grow the community, and you know go into other people's communities and just, you know, just continue to, you know, do that. I, like, I don't have any, like I bought to become partner. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's my goal, you know, because like I said, I don't even look at numbers. Like it's, it's, it doesn't really mean much to me. You know, I just yeah. love to, you know, like I said, just hang out. Like when I go to stream, I, that's me just being like, all right, who wants to hang out or, you know, have some fun. You know what I mean? So like, like, Material goals like that, like, you know, followers, subs, like I never even put like, you know, a sub goals at all, or I don't put like, you know, you know, donate money for this. You know what I mean? I don't care. You know what I mean? Right. About any of that. Uh, but like, you know, just goals in general, I just keep just goals to be right here, the same place next year, you know, and just, 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 you know, keep doing it. Keep on keeping on, keep on you know, that's awesome. Keep on keeping on. Joe. Dirt. So, <laughs> where can where can people find- where you make it <laughs> i love it love a good joe oh. dirt quote i forgot about that movie that's <laughs> so good but um hey tell everybody where they can find you so uh you can find me mainly on twitch every day but mondays and fridays uh in the evenings at uh, tom underscore tom tv you can also find me on twitter at tom underscore tom gaming um that's probably only pretty much use those two and i pretty much live my life in discord awesome discord is life well hey thanks for coming on the show this was this was awesome yeah i had a lot of fun this is this was really a lot of fun anytime i get to come out and talk about comics and star wars and gaming it's not a better day than that what are you guys talking about in here find out next episode of working Working class Class Nerds. nerds